Hello, everybody, and welcome to the final game of the weekend and the final game of the regular season. I am Reviv. I'm here with Marbles. How are you doing today, Marbles? I'm doing great today. I think it's going to be a great match between these two teams. I mean, both are vying for playoff spots right now, you know, trying to secure their pos final position in the season. Uh, while everything else is really rounded out, I think both these teams are still going to go at it because they are both trying to work their way up or, you know, stay in their spot. So it's going to be a good match between Gnomes and Rise. Yeah, for sure. The implications here are pretty, lots of seeding in playoffs, and I believe Gnomes, does Gnomes still have a chance to make it into the playoffs? I think with I don't Pierce know winning versus LCG, that Gnomes do not have a chance of making the playoffs because they do have the head-to-head -head over Gnomes. Which means that Rise has everything to play for in keeping their seeding. And Gnomes, yeah, I think, are chilling in fifth regardless then, right? Yeah, Rise is going to be fighting to stay above Yakuza. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be an interesting match today. I think we both teams are still going to come out, you know, no matter what, they're both going to go for the win. So it's going to be a great match. For sure. Should be a great one. Uh, as far as lineups are concerned, on Gnome, we're going to see Index, Axie, Admiral, Nog3000, and Louie, who is a recent addition after leaving Yakuza, is now playing for Gnome. So that's a bit of a shift for them. And on Rise, we're going to see Sam, uh, Digital, I don't even know how to say his full name, it's Digi, uh, Explicit, Hyper, and Argo. So it should be a good one we're looking forward to today. Do you got any predictions for us, Marbles? I'm predicting Rise to take this one. They have been playing sh strong overall. I think they still only w dropped one game total. You know, you're you're going into this match confident. You know, last week they did win their match. I'm pretty sure they won against Yakuza because they did have that four v five situation. And you know, they're they're uh they've really popped up as one of the best teams to look at this season. You know, Rise, uh, even last season arrivals didn't really you know break any ground but this season they they were with wichita for a little bit uh they've really proven themselves that they can beat top teams so i'm excited to see how they play against gnomes absolutely i i couldn't agree more it's a solid matchup between two teams who have looked good all season gnomes a couple hiccups here and there but both teams are solid and we should be in for a good one here and the teams are connected we are loading into our first map. Well, we're in the versus screen now. They tell you not to load in there, but I do it anyway because I like looking at it. I just click the button. I hope yeah. for the best. <laughs> click gotta, the button you... and believe. We're loading I into think, our first match here. I, I really do think that that Rise is going to take it, mostly because of you know the way they've been playing. And Gnomes has faltered. They haven't really been playing their strongest in their most recent matches, but they did have more of an end-heavy schedule. So... It's going to be interesting to see like how Gnomes approaches this game because they must know that they're basically not playing for playoffs anymore after Fierce winning earlier today. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to see how each team approaches this. Like, is Rise going to slack or is Gnomes going to slack because they're like, oh, well, we don't. what are we playing for? Or is Rise going to slack because they're like, oh, we're set. We're in that 2-3 spot. You know, we're completely fine. It's going to be... We're playing for a, a lot of things here that could you know, affect the game. Because mentality sure. is an important part. I Absolutely. We're loading in here on Odysseus Revolver. Our set this set is going to be uh, Sea Store Dome Factory, if I remember correctly. Oh, what are you seeing here, Marvels? I'm seeing, you know, with the with these type of maps, it's literally, <laughs> it's just wall charger go home. Like, it's not, it's really like, no, no other play yeah. I see is that good besides the arcade push from behind, right? You got that, mm -hmm arcade straight running and then you can also you know but at the same time just you know the what rise is showing here is just nade that barb on the left side and then go straight through it's really a good play like they can instantly get to site they all they have to do is watch the rotates back in but we also have to think about how gnomes could play this right so gnomes could play a complete retake but you'll never know but I think that this is a uh, this is gonna go to rise just because of the pure storefront play alone. Yeah, this is a uh, given how small the storefront area is and how easy it is to really push into freezer, especially if you hold tellers with the Lagros, That's really gonna hurt you. Um, 
that, that that's a callback, guys. You weren't there for that, but it was funny when it happened. The um the setup from gnomes coming out here is pretty normal. You know, you got that auto shoddy ready to run in. You have ask ASCII also with the knack to wall bang. Um, they're not really trying anything like very like new. Like they haven't even opened the storefront to try to you know get some peeks out. You know, catch them off by surprise. As you can see here, Rise is just going. You know, normal. You know, they they want to do that wall charge play. They just want to rush straight in and just win this round. Yep. And you'll see Rise is as slow walking here. It's going to be Sam who puts down the initial charge. Index from Teller is going to get the look on it. The charge is out. And they're going to nade out that barb just as planned. And the full rush is on here. Tons of damage coming from Index on the wall bang there. Nog Ooh, not Hyper doesn't check the corner. Out, but Hyper does manage to skip by with just a little bit of health there. Admiral gets a molly down on site, slowing that push. But Hyper's picked up the auto shally. Louis going to take get taken down in Freezer along with Index and Teller. Admiral gets one back in Teller, though, getting the refrag on Index there. We're into a 2v4 now. But two members of Rise are super lit, so these uh, knack wall bangs could prove fruitful. The charge is not it. The defuse not able to be stopped. Hyper able to get one. Sam, the last. Just a beautiful attack there from Rise. And unfortunately, on that round, we uh, Gnomes gets exactly what they want. Nobody checks the corner to see Noog there with an auto shotty, and he just, you know, messes up his shots. And Lewis also with the push into Freezer. He gets two shots on the guy in there, but just doesn't get the kill. And at the end of the day, that's what really, you know, affected this round. You had you had what you wanted. You got those peaks that you wanted on onto two players, and you just can't finish the kill. So I'm looking to see from gnomes here more, more you know, consistency on the those kills because they just gave up. They 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 had uh, index with a great uh, shot from Teller to distract all the players that were running in, but Noob just has to you know clutch up there and get those kills. Yeah, for sure. And I, I was surprised knowing that they had those two fights. You didn't see more of the wall bangs come out early because you knew those guys were both lit in freezer and in, you know, back in fridges. And they just, the knacks never really rang out. Moving on. Yeah, though, interesting to see that the, nobody went for a walk there. But yeah, uh, so this map is kind of the same thing. We have like set plays that usually every team most does on this map. Uh, Gnomes is right now calling out that castle play, which is pretty average. Uh, and it seems like Rise is looking to do that. Now, Gnome seems to have an idea of how they want to hold this. Uh, but, you know, we'll have to see how how this goes off. We do have an, a mop coming out in the corner of Ruins. Pretty standard. Looking to get, you know, shots on, uh, through both of those windows straight onto Castle. Now, we gotta wonder if Gnome's is gonna also do an aggressive hold here onto Castle. But it doesn't seem like we could, we know where their player spots are gonna end up yet. Yeah, this is a map that's been around a while. Most teams, th this castle push is just, it's kind of just the way you take the map. Like it's, it, it, it's almost like the last C story. Like, well, you look at it, well, I guess we're going to go storefront. And the reason not being just because the castle is so hard to take, but if you are going to go pit and try to get up into here, now you have so many windows that they're defending and they have bomb site, And that's just, that's yeah. a tough task or a tall task to take. Um, unfortunately, castle really is the must take on this map because of the rotates you can make if they don't blow it mm -hmm. for sure it's going to be interesting to see how the how in uh gnomes plays this out because they aren't really going for the aggressive hold on castle they're kind of just giving it up for free and that could end mm -hmm. up being a curse if uh rise gets too much space in the map yeah absolutely it's going to depend on how well they're able to hold these long angles like you know maybe these angles from obs which i don't think are being contested right now and these long angles, Admiral and Louis seem like they're going to be on coming down from the roof. Arise also did call out that barb spot, so it's going to be interesting to see if they still rush through it onto Louis. The charge is down here. It's looking like we're going to see a 3 2 3 obs. This is a slightly different than we normally see, but nothing too crazy. Uh, really taking their time here, waiting to get into the building. Not sure what they're waiting for. I think they're All trying right. to get the people on green to clear out the clear out index. And the shot is out, and Axie holding a beautiful cross from deep and pit's gonna take down Argo right away. And the rush immediately comes out onto index, but he's already long gone. Good yeah, rotate, rotate by him. Yeah, really good rotate out of Castle there. The Castle is now won by Rise, but they're down a member. That's gonna make it hard. Hyper's gonna have to hold this flank alone. He's able to flash both Nog and Axie there. He's gonna swing him, but 
Oh, and take up one. Explicit gets one into Louis as well. Oh, a hyper a second into OBS. Beautiful from him. The Saber ringing out. Not able to get a pick, though. Hi Explicit, another one there. Onto Index dropping down from the stairs, and it's just Admiral left alone. Every member of Rise lit except for one, and that's going to be Explicit, who ends up with a 3k. Hyper with two. Another strong push from Rise. It's the same thing there. Uh, we just see ASCII and and Nog just both miss their shots. Like, you can't... You, you get a 1v2 situation, and you can't get the trade there, and then that's... Then the rest of your team just starts playing more aggressive, right? We see Index go for a peek onto the Saber and just get instantly punished for it, and Admiral's not even peeking with them. You know, Gnomes is playing really by themselves right now, and is not really playing for those double peeks like they should be. Yeah, just stunning that, you know, you got two people here, and the flash was late. He threw that flash from here. You, they're not, they're maybe concussed still, but they can see. And they peek together, and not only do they not get the trade, they don't get a pick at all. And, you know, you'd expect probably a kill with no life's lost there, so. We we really needed Nog and Aski to get that kill, you know. You need to, you need them to hold the flank, and you also need them to be able to flank themselves, and instead... They just get yeah. the entire bottom half of the map after after that kill. And mm -hmm. good good round from Rise. I like their push. Absolutely. I like that they after the kill they took the time to slow down and re reassess the situation. And then you have those two clutch kills from Hyper that turned the round around and it was a really mm -hmm. solidly played round. Yeah, Hyper able to they had a nice pick on the Argo there and Hyper's really strong individual play taking down those two players, able to balance it back and just winning their gunfights in Castle. That's what it boiled down to. Now on Hurricane Fist, a fun factory. What are we, uh, what are we seeing to, here? Yeah, it, It's going to be interesting to see if uh, Rise decides to get aggressive on that window, knowing the fact that the castle play could be... Because uh, the they do want... Sorry, not castle. They want to go for fan here, right? But they also have to keep in mind that that window from the top of servers... Uh, in storage also looks onto the the only run up you have onto that fan so we have to it's going to be interesting to see if gnomes tries to peek that with multiple people like lcg did against i believe it was goy um but other than that we have a pretty normal setup coming from coming up from gnomes they're giving it seems like they want to give up servers and storage and they're kind of just playing into Rise right now. They're they're really scared of that office place, so they are double barbing it. But it doesn't seem like that's where Rise wants to go. So so we might have an interesting rush out coming from Rise here if they can read that Gnomes has played towards office. Yeah, I would say it's not super common to see a fan push here. You, you do usually see like an office green split to push the and get the power here. It's usually I would see the the more standard push. So maybe a little off. Off meta, I hate to say, because it's due process, but, you know, a little slightly different might, you know, have Gnome thinking the wrong way, and if no one's even looking that way, and could be I like I like Rise's plan here. They know that mm -hmm. they know that people love playing the, that double bar in the office, so instead, what they're doing is they're just giving it up. They're saying, let's just go through fan and split green, and we can just pinch from there. Now, Nuke is creeping up to that green door with a shoddy, and no one from Rise has a shotgun. So we could see an instant kill here off the kick. And double sniper is going to be out here for Rise. It's going to be Argo on the mop and Digi on the saber. Excuse me. Rise also does have some extra flashes from previous rounds. So that's also going to help them with these pushes. We have yep. four members from Gnomes just stacked up back site. Uh, there is no barb on this green. So Explicit has this nade and he's not going to be using it. Nog may be able to capitalize on this kick. The charge is out on the pipe or Sam and Hyper are going to rotate out, but they're going to go for a window flash. Not super well executed. Nog Ooh. not able to get a pick. He's going to get taken down by Sam. You know, all he had to do was just sit on that door, but instead he decides to play back. I guess he was scared about the shotgun. Might Which have been concerned about the Rise. long angle too here. Rise now going to push up toward these forklifts. Going to nade out this secondary barb. Not putting a barb further up is going to make that barb getting naded out huge. Hyper able to pick up another pick onto Axie there. Index and Admiral now kind of backed into this corner. Louis going to take a very aggressive angle here. Going to fall back into the smoke, actually. He's going to play to his advantage. They all run right past each other. Rui runs through the smoke, doesn't see anybody. Trading shots on with Rise there. On Sam there, rather. Louis really just chasing people around. Oh, Index able to get the refrag on that, that Digi got onto Admiral right back. But he's going to get taken down from Sam on the cross. <laughs> I'm 
I'm sorry. You know, that was just funny. We're having, you know, I don't know what's up with Noah's, but we're having a big issue with not completing kills here. Uh, maybe it's mirrors. Maybe it's the mental game that I was talking about earlier. But Rice had used five flashes before they even pushed in, and we're really, you know, had put themselves on the the back burner. But you know, Lewis, he gets the run through. Nobody sees him, and instead of just waiting and trying to spot out multiple people, he goes for the shots onto uh, onto. Uh, I believe it it might have been uh, Hyper, and he just misses every shot. And you know. I mean, I, I kind of being like, not to be a broken record, but every round it's just gnomes are not winning their gunfights. And that's one of the most important parts of the game. You have to win mm -hmm. your gunfights to, you know, win the round. But yeah, like I sure said, get... and, and yeah, Rise isn't playing insanely good. Like Rise, mm -hmm. like I said, I, I watched him throw five flashes into no one. Like gnomes had the good setup, but we also have to think about how nobody rotated into office once it wasn't blown either. Yeah. Really, kind of just surprising because you're right. You're seeing Noam get the positions they want. You're seeing that, like on the C store, they got they got their peaks they needed. You're just seeing people get to where they need to get, but not able to finish off the kills and not able to take advantage of the low health members either. Really, uh, putting away and giving Rise up three zero early here. But we switch sides. It's going to be Gnomes on the attack here. Going to try to tie this one out going into halftime and get themselves back into this one. It's going to be interesting to see uh, how these teams play off each other. Are they going to do the same plans? You know, we do have a similar plan coming out from Gnomes right away. You know, blow the same wall and nade that barb. But is Rise going to read that and play differently? You know, are they going to play for that pure retake that I was hoping Gnomes would do? Or are they just going to do what Gnomes did and try to get that auto shot in a good spot? It'll be interesting. I think there's a lot of... This map is one that you see it a lot on C-Stores now, I think, because they're all hard to defend if it's a storefront bomb. You see a lot of ingenuity in the way people are going to try to defend it. You know, if people are going for the retake, how are they planning on doing it? You know, combining wall bangs and different angles. And how are they going to place their barbs? Like, you know, some people might say, oh, that's barb, you know, cert like this barb here blocks you from being able to push out a teller. So it's a, you know, double-edged sword as far as, you know, are you going to play for the retake? What's your game plan? So I do think that part is fun. You also have to be careful about how far up these barbs are placed because Gnomes does want to cut cut that cut that wall. So they could also blow up that barb. But it seems like it was placed far back enough that it should be okay. Mm -hmm. Now Argos holding this barb with a tub, it, he has to get a kill through this or, or you know, he's just kind of useless, right? Absolutely. And the rest of the... The rest of the members are uh, all playing, you know, simple retakes. I'm surprised off, we right? don't see an auto. Surprised we don't see an auto shot here, knowing that yeah. Dome is the next map. But and a KR here on Hyper too. Interesting to see as well. It's gonna be the charge a little further down than we saw Gnome do it, but the Molly's gonna land there, not be able to get a flash with it. But it's a good Molly and is gonna slow down the push. This nade might come out from Nog here, and if Argo's not careful, he made a. Uh get hurt he's gonna back up into the corner does do a little bit of damage not sure why he doesn't use the sandbag cover there but regardless he's tucked into this corner a very deep flash lands right on sam's head he's not Ooh. able to do anything nog able to take down sam axe able to take down argo in freezer and we're seeing the same kind of thing the attackers on low hp and the defenders scattered louis gonna push explicit here they're doing the dance and teller it's actually louis that loses explicit wins Ooh. axe and hyper both picking up picks there Ooh, but it's nog finishes off hyper in arcade so 1v2 here for Digi. He's got Allegro, so the wall bangs are his. Oh, he's able to take down Nog, a 1v1 now. Abram with the saber has to come in here. Not the gun you want in this situation. Ooh, those wall bangs are not on the line they need to be. Digi looks like he's maybe looking for another gun or something. He's gonna swing it and push, and he Whoa! does able to take it down. What a play from Digi. And, and you know, the the retake pure retake kills from the last three members of rise are really good there uh, we have index and ascii both rush arcade and just kind of just sit on top of each other right and you know they get punished for that you know you got the ascii kills index and then they get the kill back and then but we also do see that rise did kind of you know worse confused on that push because sam runs out of bathroom and throws the molly at the close to right barb not realizing that they're only pushing out the left and he gets punished for that so it's not so, I mean, everyone's 
not playing, you know, perfect, but Rise is able to, you know, pull it back and clutch out that round, which is very good for them. Because you do have the Saber not in the hands of anymore going onto this dome. Yeah, that's a huge, a huge miss. I'm, I'm kind of stunned to see the Saber brought there. There's not a lot of super great angles you can see in that. So that's a huge, uh, could, could have huge implications here as, you know, Rise are able to maybe even bring double sniper here if they want to. Yeah, and the way, um, and unfortunately, the way Gnomes played that after the two initial kills was really poor. You know, no, no respect on any of the Rise members. They're not even, I don't think they even flashed arcade when they pushed that and they, you know, get punished for it. But we're gonna, it also, you gotta give it to Rise and how they're playing. They are playing very well uh, in these rounds. And they have been just outperforming gnomes when it comes to guns. Yeah, absolutely. You're just not seeing gnomes able to get their picks. You're seeing, you know, Rise actually really kind of using their utility poorly, I would say. You know, in their attack set and even on the, you know, gnomes not doing a terrible job of it. So Rise at a utility disadvantage and they're still just gunning right through it and taking the rounds pretty handedly thus far. Now, I'm not sure what gnomes is playing I'm doing here. I don't, I, I, I Tending to believe that they actually plan on ecoing this because they haven't pointed out any other charge on the map or placed any icons. They might be um, concerned about having to go full eco if they lose a clacker here. But yeah, that's dangerous. And, you know, if you lose, if you lose that next round, you have to eco next round, and having to eco on that factory could end up you being six and zero oh in the first match of the game, and that's really bad to go down that far. If you're already conceding the tie. For sure. So maybe some conservative but probably necessary like a necessity of to be con this conservative at this point if you're next like, not maybe there is a charge there it does they look like to, lily's got a charge the charging clackers i wonder if they're gonna push pit here uh should be seeing the rotates from from oh no they are going castle so i guess they just decided to do a normal play on this map I similar, to, Ri any line How similar to rise they are playing the uh triple on observation Black comes out into Castle. Sam's going to get a Molly down. And then Sam and Hyper both in this uh, in this kind of area with Argo and the auto shotty. But he's not getting that support like Nog saw from Axie up there. So if they're able to get a good flash into Argo here, could be huge. But Argo's able to get a one pick and really uncontested is Hyper's going to swing, but Axie's able to handle him. Argo going to swing again. Not able to get any more damage. Oh, Sam rotates in. Gets to pick onto Axie, and Admiral finally gets the refrag. The mop rings out. Oh, and Admiral gets another one onto Argo there. A 3v2 now. Index trying to be careful here. Gets punished for peeking. Ooh, a wonderful shot there from Digi's going to put Admiral down. Just Index and Louis with two APs trying to push these long angles against Explicit on an Ingmar and Digi on a mop. Oh, Index catches him not looking. It's a huge pick there. Now they should be able to handle this. Pushing on the shot there. Not playing super together, but it doesn't matter. Louis able to finish him off there, and it's gonna be the first round for Gnome. And and the thing that I'm, you know, kind of disappointed with Rise is, you know, they're just throwing those mollies instantly. They're not trying to catch out any flashbangs. They're not trying to get damage. They're not waiting for the run in. And you know, when you do that, you're just, you know, what what are those two mollies for, right? Like. That Molly's instantly thrown onto Castle. Not even movement from the gnome guys. And also on green. Like, you're not even trying to catch them on these barbs or anything. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, something I'd like to see Rise change is waiting for to Molly. Stop mollying right on yeah. the uh, get-go. If, if you're not rotating out and you're not getting utility, eight seconds isn't worth the Molly. Now, to be fair... In the current state of the game, it's hard to find good use for mollies for a lot of people. Since, you know, they're terrible. So if you're not, you know, super comfortable with the way they're functioning right now, you know, it's understandable, but you want to expect better from teams, you know, competing for playoff spots. We also have to keep in mind that that they had what they wanted. They had a 2v2 with Moppin and Ingmar, and unfortunately, Explicit uh is peeking or he's leaving his body hanging out instead of just sitting in pit or you know even thinking about going for the rotate he could rotate all the way around again to ops and get two angles straight onto both gnomes members but instead he's peeking uh one of the windows and not realizing that you can just run straight across so 
got, it's also a fact that they're not keeping in mind like where these players could run around to, even though they should be get a sense of it with the footsteps. Yeah, this is a weird round in general, actually. Kind of. Yeah, not not really great positioning from anyone. You know, we had those trades come out early of on green, and it's just not. It's just not. It's just pretty poor play. But now we might see the snipers in opposite hands here. I don't know how much ammo the uh, the mob had left, but the saber is on the side of the defenders, most likely. And so it might be a little attack mob versus defense saber, which could be fun. I think um, I think gnomes has both. Oh, do they? I'm pretty sure they have both. No, didn't they lose the saber in the sea store attack? E... No, they won that sea store. Digi clutched up. Gnomes only won the last round. So I think... Yeah. I think... Um, what is it? Oh, I think you're right. I think... But I think... Yeah, I think it's right. I think it's swapped. Actually, I think you are yeah. right. We do see the saber on there. Digi. We saw maybe a call for a pause. We'll see if it happens. Don't know if uh, our local ref, Mr. Donut, a fan favorite, is... Uh, it is pause. That pause so we'll comes see. out. Clutch play from Donut in this match. You know, he comes out here, he pauses the match as soon as he's told. You know, that's... You know the refs are on... The refs in the, that we have for DPL are unmatched. You know, that pause was really, really hard play, and he gets it off. So, let's, let's yeah. give a round of applause for Donut. Yeah, can, we get some, can we get some hype in the chat for, uh, for Donut here? Man who is, you know... Especially with statistics. I don't know if anyone's put more unnecessary hours into making our game better. You know, really just, I don't want to say unnecessary negatively. Like, you know, no one asked him to do that, and he's out here just making our game better. So, you know, big thanks to Donut. Thanks, Chad. Now I'm sure have, you guys are doing that. In three minutes, that'll happen. I'll see it, and I'll say thank you in three more minutes. And now we have the uh, sit still from everyone. Someone accidentally takes a shot, it seems like. Um, we can hyper-analyze Hurricane Fist. I think this sound map, like a whole lot of fun. I think this map is just pretty average in terms of maps. You got the office on one side, fan on one side, green's pretty open. Um I'm not sure if ASCII's supposed to keep drawing, but it seems like he doesn't care. He's just going for it. He's making this plan no matter what. You know, that's such a goofy rule. Like it's a goofy rule. No one's gonna alt F4 for an extra thirty seconds of planning. You never know, like, man. If you I you got a you got a big brain brain is sometimes grand finals best of five game five <laughs> give, give oh no my old, game crashed <laughs> oh no my game crashed get that thirty seconds of planning extra boom yeah still loading still luckily we're in here. game five of a set so if there's a reset we'll go all the way back to zero zero which is good. Not good, guys. That was sarcasm. It's going to be bad if that happens. He's in. All right, we're good, He's fellas. In. We're back. We're here. All right, we didn't plan while we were, they were gone, so they didn't plan while they were gone. So we're here and we're chilling. Yeah, that's about it. It's a uh, watch out for the toxic goo on the ground here. That'll uh, that'll kill you if you step in it. Slowly, you know. You also have to in be a fun, careful. Way. You also have to be careful about this toxic goo. Can melt you. Yeah, I don't think. Can you get up here though? Oh, no, you, you can't. can't. <laughs> oh, can I get. I think. I don't know if you can make that jump though. That's a hard jump. You probably have to like do like CSGO B hop, B hop move. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I love the audio after a pause. It's so goofy. But here we are, 4-1 Rise against up on Gnomes here. We're going to see two members of Rise playing up in storage here. A very aggressive play from them, and it's going to be another fan push. Admiral does have the mop. We're going to see him try to peek this window and see if he can get anything done there. I would love if he would unscope so I could see how many bullets he have and give you guys that information. And we're seeing not both of the, these teams think. do the same plan. Like... They mm -hmm. kind of, you know, copied themselves over and over. And we I see another we see another wasted Molly coming out from, you know, the side of Rise. Well, they have the barb there. They're not even trying to play around it. 
All right. He's reloading. He's got two shots. Ladies and gentlemen, he's got two more shots. That's all I've been trying to do. Nog going to come with the flash there. Argo is going to trade out that kill onto Nog with Axie there. They're going to wall into, or door into fan rather. Hyper able to get one there against basically all of Gnomes in storage. It's a huge pick for him. And it's a 3v4. Admiral only get... two shots up there on the fan. Now Hyper's just, I think he's just going to try to play for his life. He does get the runaway though. It was great. Oh, great huge from him. Hyper. Listen, hearing index rotate off of that window and he's able to rotate all the way out. No barbed wire. Oh, I lied to you. There's a barbed wire right there. So ignore everything I just said. But Gnomes does have the nade to throw it forward. So it's, they throw the smoke Hopefully. out. I don't know if they're intending on just running through this, but I don't know if that's such a good idea. Uh, they do go through it and they're going to hit the power. Hyper able to land a ton of damage there into index. who's basically one HP and he's going to go down there. It's Hyper gets the kill. Admiral picks up his first with the mop onto Explicit. Axie trading shots, but not nading out that bar. It makes it an easy kill there for Sam. Admiral's only got one shot left on this mop. Trying to get a pick, and he does on the Digi. It's a 2v1 here. He's going to be able to push up here. Only 20 seconds left. Trying to find the stairs. He's got an LS, too, which is huge. Not quite able to see what he's shooting at with the power out and no NVGs. He's going to have to jump on the Diffuser now if he doesn't do it soon. The round's oh, gonna go to crazy. rise. He has to stick it. And it's Hyper who finishes it off. A 5 1 set there for rise in game number one. Really confusing there coming out from Gnomes. They had the nade for both those barbs on green and they just did not use it. You know, Askey's holding it the entire time. It's last round. You have nothing to save for, right? You just gotta throw that nade somewhere. And I'm really shocked that nobody made the call to throw that nade onto the green door. You, you gotta believe that they're gonna hold this even after the, the door charge off the fan and instead it's just you know another sloppy play from gnomes not respecting the fact that there could be two people holding that that green door and instead just trying to pull through it and even the second bar was the same thing they would rather use a smoke instead of just nading it, it really makes no sense yeah absolutely you could have i don't even hate the smoke to get the power but you gotta nade out that bar first i mean if you do that and you do nade out that barb correctly, you might be looking at winning the round because Axie got killed in it and Louis took tons of damage in there. So a misplay that might really hurt Gnome's chances overall here because it's 5-1 now on their ha second half here. And if they don't take all three of these, they're not going to have a lot of chance here for game number one. But here we are on Medicant Bishop. A kill house map, one we a uh, tile set we have not seen in the first half. What are you seeing here on Medicant Bishop? This is a pretty normal map, you know. Gnomes wants to do that straight push through lockers, uh, while Rises actually, you know, wants to hold this club because you do have to think about that wall charge that could come out. But I mean, it's a pretty so a standard push here. But I mean, I can't, I can never tell what Gnomes is doing because they draw lines everywhere throughout the map, so. Can't get a read on what they actually want to end up going here. And conversely, Rise draws nothing on the map. So it makes it very difficult. It's interesting to see how different teams approach uh, their IGL's approach, like writing on the map. Some teams, they mm -hmm. just, you know, they're more verbal. Um, I draw as much as possible personally, but I, I like to I, see every IGL's yeah. style when it comes to that stuff. Yeah, we draw, we draw a lot too when we do our, like, a lot of teams, like, for us, we draw a lot at the beginning when we're, like, fleshing out ideas. But we never cement it. We often don't cement the drawing, if that makes sense. So, like, we draw all the ideas, but then we never, like, redraw the final plan. Which is probably a bad idea, but that's how we work. <laughs> you know, I, I think it is going to be this Lockers push, though. Yeah, the Lockers push just needs to be coming out. I'm we got to hope that... that here's interesting. We gotta hope that, you know, Gnomes doesn't waste too many flashes on this push because nobody from Rise is playing inside. Which isn't surprising. to take. If there are people playing in here, it's gonna take two flashes at least to clear out this lockers correctly. One flash comes out. Not a second yet. That's about as best as you can expect there coming out of... Here, the wall banks come out from, from Rise here, but they're holding pretty well against it. And Nuke opens yeah. that door and is able to let the nade go through. Now he gets in there. Oh, the molly comes down right as they get the nade out. Listening for that pin sound. Now some wall bang damage comes out. Just a little bit done onto our good friend Pepe there. Another molly comes out. Just oh. trying to save off some time. Maybe a little early. You know, these early... 
they haven't been punished for it yet, but these early mollies from Rise can really start to... If Gnomes realize this, can really start to affect them. Nice push coming out. Yeah, they're gonna push in here. Nog able to get two with the DL there. Sam gonna try to come back with the tub there. Not able to get a pick. Louis finishes him off. Argo and Digi both on the flank. But Index is able to take down a Argo. Digi's gonna try to push him with the Ingmar if he can. And he goes for the save instead. He's trying to get this super shorty kill onto Index, and it's Index who takes it. Really strong push there coming out from Gnomes. And it's the same thing from Rise. They, that first Molly was great. You know, they got some damage onto one of the Gnomes members. And then again, that second Molly, straight onto the door. Like, no waiting, no waiting to hear pin or anything. And I, I get it wanting to make sure they can't get the rush, but at the same time, it's just a waste of a Molly. And I think Gnomes is honestly starting to pick up on that. Like, they, they had, mm -hmm. hadn't even moved after... Oh, wait, but you also have to keep in mind that Gnome didn't check that back corner and the person who came out wasn't even able to get any kills. So it's 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 uh it's interesting to see how both teams are, are playing this match out. But I don't I can't tend to say that both and neither team is playing perfect, right? We have both mistakes on both sides that are affecting the, the outcome of these rounds, and Gnomes is starting to gain that momentum that they're known for. Uh, they can they can coast on some of these rounds and you know start to bring it back hopefully Absolutely. and make this more of a competitive game and if they're able to get this back to you know five to four going on their defensive side that's going to make it totally winnable here as you can see gnome's not concerned about how to attack this storefront way more concerned about among us here as we do have you know, among you us, uh, gotta always coming point out. those among us maps out it's crucial it. really simber doesn't seem to like it at all but you know among us simber do you have a do you have a problem Simbers an Among Us pro player. He just doesn't want to admit it. He See, he I, does Among I, I, Us. I, <laughs> I didn't hear any complaints. He he can't have any complaints if he's not saying them. There you go. Yeah, we got him, ladies and gentlemen. Alrighty, here we are. Noon Flintlock. What do you see in here, Marvels? Give us the thirty-second rundown. A uh, normal normal map, you know, storefront. Go for it. Just win round, I guess. And pretty average for every other storefront in the game. Yeah, unfortunately, um, the way they play now, if the bomb is in the storefront, you just wall charge the storefront and hold the one to five angles that could possibly be looking at the bomb. In this case, it's three. Now, Rise is playing this interesting because they are, it seems like they are trying to sh shove everyone through the middle instead of running that because they're bobbing off the both sides. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how Gnomes reacts because I'm just assuming they're going to storefront even though they won't place icons for wall or door charge, but... It seems like they are just going for a normal play. Yeah, it wouldn't be. Thank you, Axie. That's respectful. I appreciate the little squiggle. We got Cozy Pepe, at least. So, at least that's something. Admiral going to take the Saber again here on a sea store. A little dangerous. Is that an open there or just a pre-fire there? I think Sam is just kind of shooting to shoot. Yeah, nothing open up there. They're going to blow the far right here and going to get the, uh, that molly down immediately. Uh... Not even all the players are over there. And it's Molly a, does it's, literally it's, nothing. It's been explicit in multiple rounds with these mollies. Uh, you know, and I hate to be, you know, like I said, I hate to be a broken record, but these are affecting the outcomes of these rounds. Is these mollies that do absolutely nothing but just look pretty on the map. They do look pretty, though. I do love the animation. It's hard to see through them, but they are nice. Kind of waiting here. Gnome's really waiting out these mollies as they're it's kind of what... Rise has been doing. They're going to nade out the barb and push in without a flash. And shots coming there from Digi doing a ton of damage under Nog, but he gets the opening pick there onto Explicit. Sam's going to try to push up on the bomb here, take this fight with Louie, and Louie, who it's Louie that wins it. Lots of damage in the gnome, but lots of people dead for Rise. Strong initial push. D Digi and Index trading shots in Freezer. No one goes down quite yet. Argo with an auto shot and Teller. Not quite the position you want an auto shot to be. And he's going to take the LS shots and he's able to take down Louie there. Naga opens up the fridges. Index holding the flank on the freezer. Takes down Hyper. Argo able to get one under Nog, but Admiral gets the refrag. It's Dust Digi in freezer. Really far from the bomb. Oh, a beautiful bomb holding angle there he's able to get. Rotates into Teller now. Taking a more traditional approach, but that Teller is shotgun dope, and they can just push up an effort, and it's Admiral who finally takes it. A two for Admiral, two for Argo, but it's going to be three to five gnomes. And I, I, I think we're starting to notice a pattern here, and I think gnomes has adjusted to this, because 
I don't think I've seen one round where Gnome says straight pushed in through off a charge anymore because they know these mollies are coming out. And if, if Bryze just decides to hold them for a little bit longer, they can catch some of these players off guard, but instead, that molly just does absolutely nothing. And we also have just, like, and the pro and that second molly just comes out too late. So we have to see some better play with Rise on these defense rounds. But it does seem like they're starting to, you know, slow down a bit. And like I said, Gnomes is, can ride this momentum that they're gaining from winning these rounds in a row. And you got to think about the mental game. But I want to see some improvements from Rise just overall in their defense because it does seem like it's getting a little bit sloppy overall. Absolutely. And it's just kind of... It's one thing if you're going to molly the breach immediately and then let and then take those eight seconds to rotate into a position to defend that breach, but they're not doing that. They're just use the coordination channel, Admiral. We may see another pause come out here, folks. Um, but they're not doing that. They're just mollying and holding, which, like you said, eight seconds isn't a whole lot in a two and two minute and thirteen seconds, especially when you're eight tiles from the bomb. We have another pause coming out. Um... You know, pretty normal map. Uh, the jungle is a point that you can't really go through. You kind of have to use a charge on this map because of all the angles. But we might see a straight observation rush or a straight pit rush, honestly. You know, try to get that power mm -hmm. out. It's good. But Gnomes has to play, you know, pretty solid here. You got all these angles I can see on some multiple red doors. You get, you're going to be caught off guard if you're not ready for them. Absolutely. And this is a, this is a dark, dark map. Like, it is so hard to see in the castle area. When the lights are out, you're not getting like pit isn't so bad because the lava makes light, but castle and obs with the light out, it's lights out are just pitch black for the defenders. But overall, can this one be in Among Us? No, this one's really just a parallelogram. Nah, you got you got Among Us. Look, everything's Among Us if you just draw it. Boom, oh, among, among us. Yeah. There we go. It's the top. It's the. It's the head. It's like the mid body head of an Among Us character. Oh, what if it's? Hat. What if it's the? Uh, no, you're uh. It's on its side and it's looking up. Oh, so yeah. That's yeah, yeah. the face there, and your here's your head and your little backpack right here, right? One leg, and you can't see the other one, and like here's his fupa. <laughs> I think this is uh, going to be an interesting round that kind of decides the rest of the game. If Gnomes can win mm -hmm. this, they're already up five. They're up to five four. They brought the game back and maybe you know do some more work on that uh, defense side that they were struggling on. Or if Rise wins this round, that momentum shift instantly happens and it goes back in the favor of Rise. So it's going to be interesting to see how Gnomes play out this attack round. It seems like they're going for the straight observation rush which I don't really like because of all the angles I can see onto that red door, but, you know, it, I've been proven wrong before. I'll be proven wrong again. It's true. But, uh, overall, a solid strat coming out here from Gnome. And like you touched on, this is a crucial round. It, it's make or break. And it looks like Index is back in. Seems like we're gonna be starting this round up soon. Uh, every team, I guess we're just everyone just is gonna keep planning no matter what. So Gnome seems to have their plan. Don't know about Rise. Maybe they're verbally talking about it, but which they've been doing the whole time anyway. As long as both teams plan, there's not a problem. But if yeah. one team's like, "Oh, avert your eyes," and the other team is like, you know, drawing, well, stuff. It does look like uh, Rise waited to put their plan into action till after the pause stopped. But, uh, not sure about that jungle barb. That jungle is an almost impossible take without a barb. Like, I think it's just, just to cover all their corners, but it doesn't yeah. seem like Gnomes is even going to there. But I'd rather just drop the barb on the door at that point. Like, that barb is way yeah. too far up to actually have an effect. Yeah, you can run in, get your flash up, and then just run through it. Well, they're, maybe they're gonna play somebody down here and hold this way or somebody up here to hold that way i don't know it's gonna be interesting to see how rise defend this well, we're seeing four barbs as well being drawn is it last round it is i can count to, i can yes. count to eight not yes i can count to nine so yeah, yeah. so they probably just have four. it is last round so i think they if they can use their nades properly they can uh come out and mm -hmm. play this pretty well the double 
The double barb and obs is pretty normal. And when when you have the barbs to do it, it's a pretty pretty standard, you know, operation coming out from both teams here. It's going to come down to execution on this one. And we got two molly markers coming out of the observation. I'm really hoping that someone has, you know, figured it out what Novus is doing, and you know they can adjust to it. And I'd love to be, you know proven wrong about the molly thing but we do see another molly on explicit now how early he'll throw that i can't tell you but i hope he at least tries to get a flash pin or something we're gonna see flares not there i lied to you coming out in castle and in odd this one i don't know about that one but this one here pretty I easy to snag that power's one. pretty tough to get on this map yeah, so. yeah if they hold pit which they are kind of doing they're kind of expecting a green push here. Digi and Argo both over there. They do put the barb over there as well. Maybe they're just confident in their ability to rotate to contest this angle over here. And it is the OBS Ruins charge that comes out. Waiting for the molly and there isn't one. We have learned. It does look like... I think exclusive is to caught on. You know, we do yeah. actually see... Uh, here comes oh, the flash. There it is, but they There's go a good so molly. Hard. Nog's able to get through. Explosive able to get one in the molly. Nog's good. able to get the refrag though. Good molly coming out from explicit. Exactly what he needed to do. Even if he loses left there, another oh, good molly coming out from rise. Molly. Those tons of damage. Tons and tons of damage there. I think Nog can see Sam in the corner here, but yeah, this for seems sure. to be backing off. Now Gnomes only has one flash left. If this oh molly's thrown directly, I'll uh, pick up another one. They found a second on the a body there. Looks like maybe. Good oh, molly, another, another good molly. molly coming out from rise, and this is. This is exactly what I said they needed to adjust on, and they have. Yeah. 3v5 now. Did you not able to connect on that shot? Giving the Louis and Nog are on. the info. Louis just going to swing it. He's able to get one. Sam not able to get the refry, but Louis is on one HP. Oh, Argo's able to clean it up with that KR, and Argo with the 3k Great. just mowing right. them down. Rise securing the tie. That's what Rise needed. They needed a defense round where they actually, you know, just took the time to punish people with those mollies. That's exactly how you do it. You wait to hear anything sort of indication that they're about to make a move. We had a great molly from Castle all the way onto the red door that caught two pe uh, I think three people out. And we also had that great molly coming out from Explicit. Exactly the adjustment he needed to make. Mm -hmm. Taking advantage of their OBS intel and Gnome's not able to capitalize on their OBS intel. You know, they had an attack KR there and they just weren't able to you know, really swing on the uh, swing on the guys when they knew exactly where they were. The Rise members that were just chilling in Castle. And Argo, the only person they couldn't see, just cleaning it up. A strong round now, and no but they're back against the wall. are going to have to win three straight defending rounds to prevent Rise from taking their this map number one here. I guess map is a terrible term. It's a match number one, rather. Back on Mendicant Bishop. Gnome's really confident that we're going to see a, an admissions push here. Which isn't, again, a super... You do occasionally see it. Like, if there's no C-Store, maybe you'll see a wall charge onto uh, right into Office. But it is interesting to be that focused on it, knowing that Lockers is kind of the main take here. And, and this could be the round that Rise just ends the game on. You know, they're doing that locker mm -hmm. push. They're calling out the flash they want to do. And they will. it does seem like they will punish two members from Gnomes who are drawing those wall bang lines. Yeah, if they're not so. able to prevent those. Also, and conversely, if they're able to set up the other wall bangs, you know, coming this way, coming this way, you know, and even into here. If they're able to, you know, kind of chill in club and get those da that damage in, that could be... Huge the other way. That is kind of how this locker's push goes. Who plays the uh, You also wall have to keep better. in mind about uh, this wall bang. Mm -hmm. uh, this, sorry, this wall bang right here. Actually, no, I don't think that works out because of the wall. But if you can get to here, you yeah, get a yeah, pretty... This, yeah, if the bullet doesn't curve. But <laughs> somewhere in there. It exists. Trust us, guys. We play the game too much. A little bit too it's much. There. Yeah, there he goes. Thank you, Simber. See, Simber's a, Simber's a drawer. 860 hours. Too many hours. Too many hours. But it's Rise. They're going to go with this Locker's push. Uh, Hyper going to put the charge down. Uh, is that an extra flash? They do have an extra flash. Two extra flashes, actually. Oh, I lied. One of them's a smoke that they're going to toss onto Admin there. 
Nobody if they do really actually do have an extra flash, they want to win yeah. this round, they want to end this. And you know, we're not seeing any wall banks coming out from gnomes, I'm actually pretty surprised. Oh. And here they come, good As shots say, from index. Index gets a ton of damage there onto Argo. Lou is going to run up and do a lot of damage as well, put Argo on 1 HP and it's Index who finishes him off. Beautiful wall bangs. Oh, and now with a oh, beautiful Flogel bar. A nice beautiful Flogel bar coming there. out. And you know, hi, all the Rise members are looking all around. They're not ready for that play. And it's, you know, you can't get to do that. Yeah. You got to be ready for those Flogel bars to come out, especially on a map like this. Yeah, now they're just going to push through the bar, but it does seem like it. In there Ooh, is no Molly on exactly. site. We have to keep that in mind. There is no Molly yeah. on site. Index is not on site. He is here in club with uh, Louie and Axie. Who both have their mollies. And as that said, Louis, uh, Axie and Louis are going to rotate out. Index, another wall bang kill. As they have oh. to push through the barb. Index again trying to do it. It's a 2v1 now. Digi still just on this flank. Oh, Sam's taken down by Admiral there with the Lagros on sight. And it is just Digi left. Index is creeping up. Doesn't seem like he wants to commit. And Looks like Digi's going to go get the clacker and save. That is what we're going to see. Beautiful. Good round coming there. out from Gnomes. Yeah. That Flaggle Bar really did save this round for them. I really did like that they had adjusted to the fact that they would blow up that bar and place another one. And Rise is just not ready for it. Nobody's looking at that green door when that bar comes down. Yeah, they just weren't ready. The wall bangs we... got all their attention to the side and they were able to put it right back. No problem. Mm -hmm. I, I was hoping that they would just go off straight off that nade, but instead they just, you know, mm -hmm. slow it down a little bit because Argo dies to those wall bangs. Yeah, it's just a huge wall bangs. Index with two kills on the wall bangs. Admiral holding down the fort on sight. Lots of damage coming out from Louie and Axie too with, the, with those knacks. And it was just game over. After, once the Flogo bar was down, the whole round was pretty much lost. You don't have a nade. They have too much to know on you, and they can hear those barbed wires and just nail you through the walls, and that's kind of it. And I really did like how this round did end up turning out. I, they had they called the play that Rise was going to do, and they decided, hey, why don't we just try and double barb this? You know, worst case scenario, it doesn't work out, but it, we at least say we tried it, right? And I'm, I think that this is the adjustment no one needs to win this game, or at least force a tie, I should say. Yeah, hopefully we'll get that because then we'll get three maps and three years of our life spent in this match. And that's important. If you're not spending hours and hours and hours watching Due Process, what are you guys even doing? Yeah, imagine playing a game of Due Process and immediately casting it. Could totally not be me right now. Uh, you know what? If you're not casting at least two games a weekend while playing another one, you're not living. That's my life motto. Actually, that's on my resume. It's right at the top. Most people are really confused because I'm an architect, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> You're not cast. <laughs> We're here on noon flintlock. I was going to say before, I wasn't, I couldn't remember if there was a sea store or not. Bringing both knacks on a kill house when there's a sea store up is a wildly aggressive decision. But I guess if you're down six, it doesn't really matter. So ignore me again. Not making any sense. We also have to keep in mind that that Bryce has an easy path to victory here. You know, uh, like, like, Everyone knows this wall charge can be very deadly. If they're mm -hmm. able to play this correctly, then they can definitely win. Oh, and Askey's planning to do a little bit of a run out, apparently. He wants to punish this this play from Rise, seems like. But the turret on that top of that truck, it's really good at shooting people. <laughs> so, I'm not yeah. sure how confident I feel about that. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm throw something at you here. Completely unrelated to Noon Flintlock or even this game. Why don't they just back the truck into the front of the storefront? Oh, like it's got like a massive it? turret on top. Like, you're yeah. going to win. <laughs> you know, you know, taxpayer like, dollars. This is owned by a private citizen. I don't think you can just <laughs> ram the truck into the front of his storefront. Uh, uh, the, old, well, the best phrase that, in the world for it's a bad idea. Taxpayer you know, dollars. <laughs> I have a feeling after every Argus member dies, the driver of that truck just rams it and lets the turret go ham. You know, clean it up, drive yeah. home. I was like, based on the size of the explosion, I don't think it's a, exactly a stayed situation. It's not a, you know, it's a pretty aggressive bomb. So I don't know if that's quite the best idea to let that go off and just trust five guys. But what do I know? It's Hyper looks like he's going to be on the, the solo man adventures in green while the rest of everybody, including Digi on a saber, is going to go storefront. Admiral going to have the mop to mop it right back. Admiral's position in arcade, it's going to massively 
effect, depending on where they where they decide to charge is going to be huge. A bar the storefront is open. Storefront is open right now. Oh, that's why I'm crazy. Storefront's open. Yeah, I'm trying. I, I can't believe Digi isn't taking a wide angle trying to save ratings. Yeah. Oh, mob shot does miss it. Connect. Oh, but Index Ooh. lands with a double dig Index on the with the punish on, on Digi. You know, and Nog closes it. Admiral can't I, find the pick, but Index does. I just completely shocked about how Digi just gets instantly punished there. And, the wall and Index is going Index for more. He wants more of these kills. Argo picks up the sniper. The nade's going to come out right in front of Arcade. Do a little bit of damage there on the... No one. I'm crazy. Molly's going to come out there. Halt that push. Hyper and Sam looks like they're going to rotate back up the storage and try to do this together. Hyper going to try to wall bang this high window up here. See if he can get any freezer damage, but it's not going to land. Explosive is going to run go with straight in, flash and Axe doesn't clear the corner. He's going to take that, but Argo a refrag all the way into Freezer. What a shot from him. As it's now a 3v4. Four members of Gnomes up here. A flash going to come out into Freezer. Index able to get away. Argo not able to find the pick. Nog with a double kill on the auto. And it's just Argo on the Saber left outside. And Admiral's going to molly it to make sure that he can't come in and do any stupid Argo stuff. And, you know, not... At the, at the end of the day, it comes to Digi not being able to hit that shot onto Index. And that we push from green with no shotgun just, you know, slows him down. I'm surprised. And also, we have to think about Explicit not checking that corner. He played that corner himself, which is really shocking to me that he didn't, you know, take a peek at it. But I guess he just decided that he was going to try to get the mop down after he shot. Yeah, kind of... Kind of wild, and Index just super clinical there, able to handle Digi super, super fast. And that's all she wrote, really. Totally threw off the the attack, and with one member already trying to push green, you kind of handicap yourself. Now there's only three members pushing storefront, and that's defendable. But now we're on kill zone. Free noon. No, uh, gnome's trying to defend. Uh, trying to defend for the tie, and push this to at least three games, and you know, bring it back to. Just bring I'm it back. Say, I'm <laughs> not saying I don't want gnomes to win. I'm all I'm saying is I would prefer not to go to three matches automatically right off the bat. That's a. It, oh, oh. As a caster, someone who, you know, played a game today, because I played a game today, even though it wasn't on stream. You played a game today. I've had three matches this season that have been over three and a half hours. They they take a while. We're not yeah, saying we wouldn't love a fun, long, competitive game for the history books. Hey, I played in that. I played in the longest due process game, five hours, you know. Oh my it's god, not, that game was wild. Not fun. I got tired watching it. I I did. I went to bed. I didn't watch it all. Regardless, we're on free noon. <laughs> we're on free noon. Uh, similar setup coming out for both teams oh, as guys played in. Oh, green uh, is a folly here. Do, it doesn't work. Seems like they want to play towards green. and I won, Are they out of clackers? Is that what it is? Oh, they are. They are. They clack locker and they clacked. Uh... No one doesn't realize this. They haven't called No, it they out. don't. Oh, maybe. No. They're barbing. Maybe they do and they're just not playing it super aggressive. Maybe Who knows? They're... Who knows? It seems like for now it's. Yeah, they wouldn't put them up there if they knew they only had green. There's no way. Gnome's just not counting clackers. Wild. Anyway, we're going to see a, a green push here, and somehow gnomes aren't... Oh, never mind. Maybe they are ready for it. They got three players looking this way. Oh, they charge on jungle. Oh, no, they saved first round. We're crazy. Uh, lots of damage going down on the smoke there. Argo's super lit. Index getting a ton of damage, but Admiral with the mop is going to get the first pick. They're gonna. Sam's gonna push him, and Axie's not gonna be their supporter. But Admiral gets another pick. What a shot from Admiral there Ooh. to keep himself safe. 
More cross up there from Index. Again, actually not supporting the mop here, and the Hyper is finally able to take it down. But all of Rise at less than half HP. You hear the Saber Ring out there, and it's going to be Index forced to fall back because he's good, but if the Saber knows he's there, he's not going to get that one. Oh, a beautiful oh, Molly! Beautiful Molly. Explicit on the ruins. It's a 2v4 here. And very little HP for both remaining members. Axie, a free kill there onto Hyper, and it's just Digi with the Ingmar, and it's a tie. What a, what a tie. game. What a, a tie. 5-1 for, for Rise and a 5-1 right back for Gnomes. We're playing three matches, folks. Don't go anywhere. This is going to be a long one. You got to give it to Gnomes on the comeback here. I think Rise really did just get swept into the whole Gnomes momentum. And uh, they only really start to, you know, get get into their defense group when it was too late. So we get to see how how yeah, both teams sure. will play different next game. But it was a, it's been a great game so far, and it's just really an excellent game. You're seeing both teams learning and feeling each other out. You know, at first you saw Rise, you know, just kind of pushing hard and defending the rush when they were defending, and Noam was like, "Wait a minute, we'll just take our time. We'll take advantage of them rushing." And we can take our time. There's two and a half minutes on the clock. 2.15 on the clock. We got plenty of time. We'll let you guys throw all your mollies, and then we'll flash and kill you. And that's exactly what they did in that second half, and it was really well done. Uh, I believe here we will be seeing a break. Yeah, five-minute breaks can come out here. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a few minutes with game two of Gnome and Rise.
Welcome back, everybody, for match number two of at least three here between Gnomes and Rise. An epic comeback there from Gnomes in the first game. Marbles, what are you seeing out there? I'm seeing that, you know, Gnomes did come off to that slow start, and I was really worried when they went down that those five rounds, and they just surprised me. They shocked me with how, how they were able to, you know, clutch it up and, you know, come back with rounds. But I also think it has to do with how Rise was playing. You know, there's their defense side, until that last dome round was not looking solid at all. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how both teams play differently going into this match because you do have those adjustments that we saw mid-game. Rise did start to, you know, pick up on those mollies and what Nose was doing, and Nose did start to pick up on what Rise was doing, right? So we have to keep keep in mind that these teams are both starting to, you know, get warm. They're starting, you know, the mentals are shifting back and forth. They're starting to, you know, get into... The playing styles that they want to so i'm going to be interested to see if this match is just going to be as close again or is it just going to be a runaway for a single team for sure it wouldn't stun me either way if they do a little bit of back and forth learning or if it's going to be you know we saw gnome kind of run away with it at the end there will they keep that momentum or is rise going to be able to sit down reset go to work because they've definitely got some you know, Econ was bad by the end of it, of course. That plays a role when you're getting, you know, beaten badly in a set. But you got to make sure you got to round the horses, circle the wagons, and uh, figure out what's going wrong and fix it. That's what Gnomes did, so Ryze got to do it right back. Um, I'm, I just like, I feel like, you know, both teams were kind of like coming into this a little bit slack. Not Maybe not slack, but they were like not like ready right off the bat for like how competitive the other for team sure. would be and i think that showed in those initial rounds from gnomes is they were not ready for the way rise would play and to kick that back rise was not ready for how gnomes would start to pick it up in those later rounds so it's gonna be a good match you know even if we're here for four hours it's gonna be a good match absolutely and in match number two we're gonna open with kill house c store dome so no factory in this first uh this first set here uh with gnome on the attack to start we're gonna be on a tiger penitent 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 guys like i said i'm an architect i'm not a reader pictures of buildings that's that's my thing not you know like words who needs words tiger Stupid. penitent <laughs> Yeah. Are, are you here marbles what, what are you seeing on tiger penitent here it's the dev's fault for making it sound weird you know what when in doubt, blame the devs, right? Well, you know, using big boy words for esports players is a no bueno. I'm not in right now, but I'm assuming the map is cool. It's oh, it is cool. It's the one that's got the uh, the vault that cuts the map in half with the club on the oh, one side, the reception up we top. We played that map today. That's a very uh, that did map we... can go either way. Did we play I... you in that in the warm up? The warm up game we played. I think that happened there. It might have been that, but I know yeah. I played this map today. Yeah, and yeah. We like barely won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I be, I be, yeah, yeah. I was there for that. We were there for that. Guys, yeah. we're gamers, okay? This anyway. is a very standard hold coming out from Rise. So you have the barb on lockers. You have yeah. the barb that goes on club. Honestly, talk about a place you know, for a something... flogo barb. If you're able to flogo barb that reception, you win the whole match. If they, if something... they do go the green push. Yeah, and you know, something I haven't really seen is anyone do that reverse rush, that office rush. And, you know, Rise is keeping that in mind. But I, oh, I always feel like it never needs to be barbed. No, I agree. It just, it's so, I, I hesitate to say bad, but bad? Like, you have people in Locker who are here. That's such a long corridor. You've got this. You've got this cross that I can see from a country mile away. You know, you yeah. just turn around and go behind your cover. Like, there's so many reasons really that office is not the play. I just feel like that barb does not need to be a thing. I feel like you need double barb club. Well, especially since them. you've brought four, just don't bring it. Oh wow, they did bring four. You know, mm. that that might be a little bit of a miscommunication. Caster passionately disagrees with defensive strategies from Rise. Breaking story. On at eleven. Ooh, lots of wallbang damage there. Two wallbangs though. Just on to Nog. They're gonna open up that locker door. Both Nax again with C Store up, bringing both Nax on. Killhouse. Nog opens that door finally. Digi's gonna get his wall bangs in. Oh, Explosive's just gonna swing it and do tons of damage to Nog, and he's not gonna get shot back at. Alright. That's one way to attack. 
going to get the nade down. Explicit smart enough to run into that cover and he's going to fall back there. Digi again is going to get these wall bangs in. And a better times molly there from Rise. Not the getting the utility out, but waiting. Well, now Digital has to get his... Moving. Digital has to get his other molly, but... It's he does, but it's actually just going to be... They're going to lose it. They're going to lose the button altogether. And Explicit, the only one with the wherewithal... Actually, Sam tries as well. He does get through the vault. <laughs> Digi and Hyper now stuck in lockers. Digi with the molly out. Louis able to get the first pick onto Argo there, who's not able to find the shotgun pick on the other side of the door. Oh, an explicit Ooh. caught hanging there by Admiral. All that's low. Louis, another one on the same is trying to push. Hyper kind of left alone on this side as Digi cannot help on this side of the wall. Index gets Molly completely. Not a single bullet touches him. And the Molly's going to take him all the way down. Digi's going to have to go for a flank here. Don't close the. Don't close it. Oh, what are you doing? No. What are you doing? Hyper? Hyper? What? Admiral? Admiral? Oh. <laughs> All right. Oh my well, God! What a round! What a way to uh, what a way to start it off. Um, really like interesting to see Rise like not rotate that Molly over at all. Mm -hmm. Digital stands and sits on door. I don't know if he realized that he would be cut off from the rest of his team, but you got to think that that don't play that pretty normal. They send four people to you know like I I was expecting yep. you know a retake of the room or something, but you know Digital just sits there holding the Molly, and you know Rise just gets gets you know slowly traded out they're not even trying to you know peek together yeah kind of wild they definitely some individual play and the rotates just weren't there at all like after excuse me after they lost the button you know they were just chilling in kitchen they didn't rotate all the way out so it kind of ended up being a trickle effect in club like you were saying yeah and yeah. now they're out of uh they're out of nax so be yeah. They're not going to be able to play wall bangs here on Lance Legion. Thankfully, this map isn't like a huge wall bangy map, but I mean, it's still nice to have. Uh, Gnomes is already, you know, coming out freaking, you know, doing good. You know, they're doing the plans <laughs> the way they want to. I totally almost didn't just curse there. I'm a good boy. And, you know, it's beautiful. Beautiful. You know, Marble's an experienced season caster here. He would never do something like that. Yeah, funny uh, story. I was uh, casting for my college, and I said a, a little bit of a curse on the college stream, and then I learned. I, you That's, know what? You saved us there. You learned by making mistakes. You know what, guys? That's what I think we need. Rise needs to learn from that as well. You have to learn from your mistakes. Gnome has figured out how Rise is defending and attacking, and they're playing to it. And we're gonna see that kind of come out here again, I think, because the barbs just aren't where they need to be. Oh, are Rise gonna open? Maybe seeing Rise open here on this uh, on this attack. Yeah. This is this is something that Rise I think needs to do. I think they need to play aggressive. I think they need to start taking fights that they they can win. So you know what? I'm actually very I'm excited for, for this. I'm all for it. You know, for for all the flack I give these two teams. I'm excited for when one of them decides to switch it up. And this is the switch up I think needs to happen from Rise after that I first agree. round. I I think Rise could use some off some off standard strats for sure here. Off the beaten path. Sometimes uh, it isn't even about winning the round. You just need to no. prove you Rise, they get Ooh, the good open. Gonna come open. Beautiful timing. Admiral lit, Axie lit, beautifully executed there from Rise. Not a single damage done, bit of damage done back to him. How on earth? Like, literally, how is that barb okay? The luck of the DP gods. <laughs> Good Molly. Good Molotov's gonna push people back off. Tons of damage. Axie literally has, like, like one. Like, three. He has three HP there. Not ideal for him. Oh, they open again! No, Argo takes shots. Axie able to get one back, and Louis goes in. He's gonna get another. This open backfires now as Nog's able to get in and take down the member of Tellers there. Only two members of... Rise left another one picked up there by Admo. Did she able to pull one back in a 1v3, a winnable 1v3? Everybody super Ooh. lit. But Axie finishes him off, unable to get him across. Axie a 2k, all with 3 HP. Somehow no wins that one. You know, I like the idea. I don't know how I feel about that second open because you could just keep them all coming through a, 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 like a doorway you can all look at and punish. But you know, Rice decides to do it. 
Um, they got everyone though, was just not able to finish those kills, but I do like the switch up. I do like that they're starting to, you know, give it to Nopes. Like, and it was a good play, but unfortunately they just couldn't get those kills at the end. Uh, they got punished by those flashes. Weren't able to waste any flashes on the initial push either, which kind of hurt them in the end. Yeah, but, sure. I will say I did like the idea. I think it was mm -hmm. a good idea. Absolutely. I think it was definitely the right call. And I don't even hate the second open if you're able to execute. But, you know, you, you listen for those pins on the second open. You're like, ah, they all have flashes up. We can shoot them. The problem is when they all have flashes up, they throw them. And if you don't get them before they throw the flashes, you're in a lot of trouble. And that's what ended up happening. But now we're on what some call the Gnome Dome. Only Gnome says that, guys. It's not, it's not anybody else, actually. Uh, Southern Sandwich is going to be the map. Marbles. It's my least favorite map in the game right now. What are you seeing on Southern Sandwich? Bad map. <laughs> so there's a lot of reasons this map sucks, guys. We're going to tell you all of them. Castle the play... can see literally everything. Boo, boo, boo. boo also, boo. this play is seems pretty good, but if you just hold it correctly, you get punished so mm. hard. Um, you know... I think this this map is this is a map where I should be able to clutch out. Uh, it depends, you know. Gnomes look hot. They look like they're hitting their shots now, so you know. No wall charge. That the, the only real solid strat is a double charge, like into here or something like that. It's just it's a terror. It the even the green you got ops and castle both got a beat right and onto ops that. Ops is just a beautiful, and you can see from here. That's just. So when we say a map is bad. We don't just mean it's one-sided. Like, I want them to get that away. People think that all the time. Like, oh, this map's terrible. Like, no, you just suck at it. No, no, no. That's not what's going on. The way this map plays does not lead to fun engagements, to good engagements. A lot of times when you're getting killed on this map, it's people you're not looking at. It's people you're not, you don't even know where they are. Because there's so many angles. And But in the cover is faux. Like, you think this rock is safe. Like, you want to clack and come to this rock, but there's still there and there. and there. Like, it's just... And even for a defender, all these angles are still all two-way. So you can try to sit somewhere, and if you don't, if you make a mistake on where you think your team are, all of a sudden, you're shot in the back. And it's just, it's not a fun map to be a part of. Now, it seems like they want to do this ops play. Argo's ready for it, man. He's right up against this door. Looking to do a little bit of a, a tomfoolery. Argo Argo positioned for a uh, for a mad round here. Oh, and there he goes! Oh, he gets one, and he gets back in! Oh, he gets back in! That's the charge down, so I don't think they got the charge down. Oh, no, no, they Admiral has it. Uh, Admiral picks it back up. It was on Nug. Oh, they oh, he shot comes up and doesn't need it. They're going to be able to take down uh, Explicit there. Or, yeah, Explicit. And then he somehow... Oh, it's the Molly! He throws the Molly as his dying breath, and he's able to get... Trade himself out. Louis picks up another under Hyper, though. So three... B2 for the defense. Unfortunately it, for Argo, that auto shot, he's not going to do anything else. <laughs> it's, uh, and this round isn't over yet. You know, you still have that charge sitting on Admiral. He can run around the map and open up jungle. Nate comes yeah. out from Lewis. Oh, he's going to drop it up into Castle, I think? Oh, it's going to land. I'll do a half damage to Argo, but not a ton. Damage on the Sam as well. Argo's going to let that auto shot. He's single. He's going to push, actually. Not able to get a kill, but a ton of damage onto Louis. Admiral's still playing it super far back with the mop. Ooh, Sam's able to take down Louie, and it's just Admiral on the Saber now. Guys, be careful not to get too aggressive here, though. This round is not lost. Ooh, Sam looking left. Guy's on the right. Guys, get the first no, match. And the game. Can't right. say we told everyone so, but we really did tell everyone so. <laughs> like, this straight ops rush is so easy to punish now, right? And Argo just timed it perfectly. Like, he's already out of before they're even ready to respond to like that 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 could happen yeah it was just a a really solid defense and that map's hard to attack anyway and then you get two on a spawn peak and... gg see you on the next half you know and and it's it's not just the fact that that map is pretty bad i mean rice played that perfectly you're oh, not sure. expecting that run out from argo no no so it, it was a good map over it was a good way for rice to get some momentum back for sure and coming back onto this map which i actually again i love i think this map plays beautifully um 
you know, lots of brain involved, but the aim is still important with these long angles and these shotgun. It's just, you get a little bit of everything on this one, and I love it. Regardless, it looks like we're like going to see the out. offish push. Thank God. Ooh, Not because you know. it's a good push. I think it's an objectively terrible push. I just want to see it because I've never seen it. Oh, my chips. I knocked over my chips, guys. You know, and I think this is going to perfectly catch Gnomes off guard. They're sending two people green to bait. I think this is a great play coming out from the side of Rise. Especially because Gnomes agreed with you. They don't need a barb down in office. We're, they almost triple barbed club there to really punish uh, punish Rise if they don't bring a nade. Because most people have to use that nade here in lockers. Um, so we'll see. If they're able to secure the dub here with this different attack which is what we were talking about saying we were saying rise use different attacks you're gonna have to play a little different because they're reading your strats right now so you have to mix it up and it looks like that's what they're going for uh, you know i am really excited to see how this works out because i do also agree with you i don't think it's a good play i think just just forcing your way through reception is the move but they have seemed to have called out that nose wants to double bar that stage so this could instantly catch them off guard. Rise reading the book. The problem is the book says you have to do this terrible push as your only other option. So not a good book. We'll see if um, Rise can rewrite it. No, I was clever banter. I'm proud of that one. That was good. Slow walking here on the office, which is a solid strat. They not that there's anyone close enough to hear it, but they want to play it slow here not give anyone the idea that they're going to do something so outrageous. And there's no one within 10 tiles of the breach. And they're actually choosing to only send, you know, two people to reception. I think they need to just run. Like, I don't know why you're walking here. Yeah, minute you need 30 to catch, left. You need to catch these people off guard. Yeah, and index 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 takes shots. In the map where you got to push a button, you're already adding a lot of time. The charge is out novice in the full rotate. You see gnomes scatter. Oh. Rotating their way back in. Rise not able to capitalize and, fast enough. And uh, and unfortunately they throw two flashes into the smallest office in the world. It really is gonna come back and fight them. Yeah. We're gonna nade out lockers here. It's gonna be Argo flashing in up there. But he's gonna stand in a molly while he does it and lose almost all of his HP. Argo super lit there. Oh boy, Nob's he also into a rat spot now, he throws too. two flashes and doesn't even run through the molly, you know. Oh, Argo able to pick up the pick on a nog and they are going to get the button. Uh, but Louis on the flank is going to get hyper. Argo's going to have to do his best to keep him at bay and he does only on one HP though. Sam's going to push up into the only room that can't get to bomb. And while he's doing it, Admiral's going to take down the rest of his team. <laughs> Admiral a 2k onto explicit and Digi in office there. That's a huge pick there. Argo now left to peek the club. Through two barbs with the DL. It's not looking great here for Rise. And and you know, unfortunately here, Rise wasted every single one of their flashes in some way. Nothing to push into club with. And it was too late. Two here, one here, and two here. <gasps> oh, what a play! A play from Argo, he runs around, he pushes the button, Sam's able to slip in! 60! 70! 80! He's gonna get it! What a play! No way! No what way that way? works! What? There is no way! There is no... I'm sorry. That is the biggest fuck up I think I've seen. There is no way that should Ow. ever happen. How? How does... How does he not get seen? How does he... Oh my god. What a- I gotta get- Clip! I can get We're a little round of applause. We're sitting here talking about how it's lost. We're sitting here talking about how it's lost and out of nowhere. Rise sends Argo all the way around. He pushes the button, closing the door. But as the door is closing, Sam just slinks his way in there. And the button has a cooldown. So even though Argo died immediately, there wasn't enough time to get to the button, wait for the cooldown, and then to open it back up. Holy cow! What a play! I'm speechless. I... There was a guy on bar, right? There yeah. was a guy sitting on bar. All three of them were in club. 
All three of them were in club. Why was you know? How did he get? I I don't know how he was able to sneak in. It got too comfortable. No one's sitting in vault either. You also got to think about that. Nobody's. Yeah. Wow. Just crazy. Anyway, we're back on Lance Legion. It's two two. That round only counts as one, despite it being epic. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I'm expecting. I uh, I'm not. Wouldn't be surprised if uh, Gnomes is a little bit tilted here. Oh yeah, you got to be livid at that. Look, you know, Rise is feeling themselves. They're drawing tub time. They're shooting people in the head over here. They're drawing lots of little pictures. And that could be and... the momentum shift that Rise needs to win. Absolutely, that was huge, huge for them. We're wow. getting secret inside intel that um, they are, in fact, tilted. Oh, who'd you hear that from? You uh, that I source? cannot disclose my sources, but it turns out that um, gnomes are they're not happy. So they're going to have to, re- as I've said already, they have to circle the wagons and try to get themselves uh, back and pick up this round here. That's huge. Just so three one versus two two is so like astronomically different. It's a whole nother world. I want to point out this circle as well here, and fridges where index is playing. Fogel got an ace against rats, the team I play for there, and I was the one who failed to clear him the second time. <laughs> so I think it's worth noting that you really got to go look in that corner. Oh look, I, there it is. I'm watching on the stream on the delay. <laughs> I'm uh just still just a uh, speechless. Oh, is this a green take? Oh no, they I don't think so. No, they're going. I was getting crazy for a second. Although Charge is going to come out here into storefront, Digi's going to try to take the picks, and he does. He takes down Admiral there right off the reach, and that's not what no needed. Oh, but now he's going to get two right back in storage with the auto shot. He excellent play as Sam's going to have to clear out bridges here. He's able to do so, taking down Axie. Nog on the flank with this auto shot, but Sam and explicit see it coming and take him out of 3v2 here with digi on the saber here this is gonna be a tough one to pull back out for gnomes index able to get out of freezer with his life but not a lot of hp good initial push from rise oh louie just able to take down the saber no one looking at the teller hole a huge mistake for rise there Ooh, oh, index. index gets pulled out by the UAV. Louie, another one! As they're both looking the wrong way! Louie just getting these free picks. Index pushes into freezer. Explicit hears and is able to take him down. It's a 1v1. Both members at full HP. Oh, tons of damage there for Louie. As he's explicit just trying to defuse. Trading shots back and forth through the teller hole. Explicit can't connect. Oh, Louie hits him again. Ooh. He's on one shot. Just one bullet left on Explicit. Picks up the saber. Oh, a 3k for Louie. What an epic moment there to bring that back. It's 3 to 2 for Gnomes. You know, and you got three people alive all in storefront, and you're all looking at everything but the one place they could shoot you from for free, right? You, no one even wants to think about Teller right there. And Louis, you know, you know, Yakuza, who played for Yakuza, you know, he punishes them for that, right? And I think that's a very, th- like, you, like, I think that's something that he's learned for playing with Yakuza, something that you can do to punish people is just wait for them to alter a different way and then and then open that teller door and just shoot. Gnomes that's is, good. uh, what a recovery from Gnomes after that last round. You gotta keep that in mind. Like, that's a great round to win. It's huge. A, a huge, to bring it right back on a similarly goofy way. Not near as goofy, but still. And... Yeah, just just a miscue from Rise there, because that was totally winnable. You have a saber. Why is your saber the guy defusing? Why is your only full HP the one the guy defusing? You know, a lot of questions you got to ask about how they play the uh, the the quote unquote post plant. Um, but it's three to two gnomes, and now Rise have a tall order here, trying to push through Southern friggin' sandwich. You know, and and Rise not tying it here could really spell out the uh, the match, the rest of this match, how it goes. You mm-hmm. know, you're going down four two this early, ain't a good look. But if you can get to three three, you know, you're even, way more to work with overall. Absolutely, it's a, it, like we talked about, two two is dramatically different than three one, three three is dramatically different than four two, and 
it is all just one, guys. I know mathematically, but the way it feels at halftime when you're down two as opposed to, you know, being tied, it's a whole it's it's different. That's what I'm saying. Come on. Just keep up. Anyway, let's keep up. we're gonna see no full of barb and castle of barb and obs. No barb in the top of obs though. A heavy green hold? Are they out of quackers? Um everybody died on Kill House. But that was Ooh. no they cla everybody died on Kill House and they just lost that last round. They're out of clackers. And Gnomes calls this perfectly. They're already ready for the hold against this. Yeah, three barbs in pit. If a smoke in pit, folks, the pit will claim a life from this round. Calling it. If we had cameras on, I would make Simber switch it back to put my face on it. We will see somebody fall into the pit in that smoke. One hundred percent guaranteed. I'm just really confident that's going to happen. It happens all the time. Sam going to be the the chosen fellow to kick here. Just kidding. He's going to look around and look at the glass, see what he can see. Axia Molly ready for the initial push. Nog and Index going for a late full rotate here, trying to get themselves into position. So Molly comes out early? It's going to land. Yeah, we didn't really want to wait, I guess, for any sort of indication yeah. of a flash, but, you know. The nade's going to come out there. Flash, a smoke goes deep as they're able to push in. The mop shot does not connect, and they're able to sneak their way into OBS now. Gets another flash in there, but the OBS oh! is going to pay big dividends. The trades all come out, actually. It's going to come out even on 3-3. Three to three. Nog and Louie able to get one each, but it's not enough. The full five man of Rise pushing into OBS there, and all of a sudden, it's an OBS take. Huge. Oh, power oh and now. actually turns off the power. He doesn't want them to be able to spot from, uh... From Ob's, that's a really smart play there from Axie. Good peek coming out right at Ooh, nine. Great shot from Admiral there. Index Flash still able to see Sam there. Sam puts up a smoke lens right on top of the mop there. Axie's gonna rotate around the castle, see what he can see. He's gonna trade shots and win the fight with Sam there. It's just Digi pushing up. It puts Index down to one. Not able to find the kill though. Axie turns the power back on. And Digi goes back into OBS. But with only 30 seconds left, he doesn't have time to figure out where they all are. But Axie and Index both on one shot. This is winnable. Admiral can't land the, find the first shot there. Digi's going to go into the shadow of the bomb here. See what he can do. And he's going to get peeked from every direction. It's Axie who gets the final kill. Two from Axie. And it's 4-2 Gnomes. Yeah, no one's played that perfectly. They had the barbs all over, so the only place that was given up for basically free was Ops. And, you know, they still got two kills. If if Ryze had been able to kill Nog and Lewis with with no uh, with no repercussions, then I think they win this round. But, you know, those cool. flashes were just awful. You know, those flashes hit, don't even affect either of them, or at least only a little. You you need a deep flash in there that just mm -hmm. full white them, but instead, you just let them give you, get peeks on you. Or even just one more flash you got to read that you've you know you're pushing green you're throwing flashes early you flash them off the initial peak and then you got to flash them back behind that one-way cover of obs you know they can pre-fire anyone anyone in the due process league i'm gonna say this confidently with a kr and three tiles can double dink you if they know exactly where you are and basically has walls like obs gives you i mean that's that's as free a kill as you can get even if you're concussed so you got to make sure you're getting even those deeper flashes in. And then if you're able to get five guys into OBS, you've already done your best and you get picks. So now you got to try to, they didn't really have any usable flashes to push into ruins anyway. So, you know, execute. But we're on a new half. Econ resets. Sinister Spectre. What are you seeing here, Mobile? We got a really aggressive green that you can hold with a mop. We also do have that fan or even that docks that you can push out of. Now, it does seem that Ryze wants to look towards this dock with the wall charge and get power so those people can come and fan. But it also all depends on how gnomes decide to hold, hold the docks overall. Yeah, a lot of times when you have, especially a wall charge in play, I missed the set because I'm a failure of a caster. But... Especially, you know, you have a dock here that's usable. You know, you could either door or wall this if you wanted to. So you have to be careful about how you're going to play dock. It's a little different than if you got these trucks in all all five, all four of them in this case. 
And it does look like they're going to wall charge into Doc here on their uh, first opportunity. So if uh, Noam doesn't position themselves correctly, they could be in trouble. Yeah, and I'm excited to uh, to see if if Rise is able to pull off their plan. Now, nobody's really watching that uh, that Doc's rush, but people are moving over now. I uh, You got everyone kind of condensed in this one area. Those mollies are not ready for that dock uh, push. Mm -hmm. So index is not Ooh. rotating. That looks like a. It seems like a good idea. As he's it seems like he's gonna hide in one of those trucks. Looks. I got a question. This bar. No one's gonna be able to play that. You're just maybe making them waste the nade. Maybe, but they have the window, so they're gonna know no one's playing that. I just. That's a silly bar. If you don't have. It. Axie's not in a position to be able to contest that where he is currently, unless he's going to make the jump. But you really want to make a jump? And there's no way back. The wall charge is out in Doc, though. Smokes out. Index caught off there. Molly does Ooh. tons of damage. He's really able to get one on the lit folks to Molly. Index is locked into the truck. It's a 4v4, folks. Index cannot shoot or get out of that truck. The fan team is able to get in. They split able to pick the kill onto Admiral Naga. Refrag on a Digi. That's both snipers down in this 3v3. Keep in mind, the power is also out. So yeah, the power goes gonna... out there. That's a huge... I'm surprised they haven't gone and grabbed this flare and thrown it back into the corner yet. Two flashes. Both of them are on hyper for the attack. No utility left for the defense. Plus, they're taking some shots. They're going to push this office. Going to get the second flash in, and it does wonders. Louie can't see a thing. Sam's going to push him, though. Not able to get the pick, and Louie finishes him off. As Explicit's going to be forced to go push Nog. He's able to get the kill, but Hyper's seen from office and is killed. Explicit a refrag onto Louie there. And it's a, again, it's a 1v1 because Index is stuck in the truck. But Axie goes to get him out. He turns the power off. But he doesn't let him back out. Let him out of the truck. It's a 2v1, folks, but it's 60%. It's oh. 70 Axe is just gonna- Oh, he pulls off! No! Axie and Index going together and Axie gets the kill! Oh, I'm like, no! I think he had it! I think if he holds there, he, he wins! Absolutely he had it. He wow. I think, oh, what a What a close round. But it's Gnomes up 5-2, a commanding lead in match 2 here. What a good- old for gnomes I, I i was getting a little bit worried there when index was instantly locked in but ascii you know he he remembers that his teammates still alive or they're probably calling it to him and he goes for it you know he's not scared he doesn't try to you know wait it out and i and i like that he waited a little bit before opening truck because he was getting peaked so he doesn't let himself get punished there yeah huge makes all the difference the fact that he's locked as opposed to killed wins them the round eventually But here we are back. IX Sword. Not IJX. Get out of here. We're, we're going to pronounce this this correctly here. A weird we have another map. map where it's just both red doors leave you right into pinches. You know, a little dumbbell office here. And a teeny, teeny little kitchen. No, it's going to be interesting to see how Gnomes decides to defend this. If they're going to respect that kitchen player, they're just going to, you know, play around office. We have a really good uh, round for, I think, both sides. I think this map can go either way, depending mm -hmm. on the holds and the mollies. So I'm, I'm excited to see what, what the outcome of this round is. But Gnomes is riding that momentum. They're up 5-2. They're showing Rise that they can win against them. And I don't know if that comes down to Rise, you know, after... You know, even after Rise got that clutch play, it could have been 6-1 right now. You gotta think about that. If it, but Rise just hasn't been able to get their footing after after going down so many rounds. Are they going to be able to readjust here? I don't know, but they kind of have to if they want to not go down a match. Giving up a... Give it, not tying here, not winning here is really bad because the next game, the, the other team only has to get to 6. Yeah, so for you only sure. Force the tie out. Yeah, huge implications on uh, when you tie first, it makes the second map so, so, so important. Admiral actually going to bring the mop here, try to put this one away. Uh, with the, I'm assuming there's a dome last if they were going to use the wall charge. Again, I, I, I'm i a terrible caster. I'm not looking at the maps, but I'm going to assume that. <laughs> Did you see it? Because I missed it. 
No, I did not see it. All right. Really. So, I'm gonna assume that there's a, uh, a not a C store and there's a dome left, and this is a very aggressive play from Admiral because they wouldn't have used the wall charge if there was a C store up. That's just that would be silly. Regardless, we're here. It's gonna be a split push. Three brick. They're saving two for reception. Oh, and Admiral gets a beautiful shot there on the explicit. Sam has to push through the molly, and he's one. Index is gonna wipe him up there, and Nax is gonna swing. Digi not able to pick up the kill. But Did Digi basically up? one. Axie's gonna run out. Not able to find it. He's gonna run out again. Oh. UAV handles it. The heat. The heat. Come on. Somebody runs out as much as Axie should know that by now. Argo's gonna push reception here from behind. Index is able to get away. The All the way into Brick player. House and get out. The sixth player for the attackers is always the UAV. You know, Axie has the double man advantage and he's like, I want more, right? But you got to keep in mind that it's really easy with these flashes for the attackers to turn around around. I'm not sure how I feel about that play overall. Yeah, I, I don't mind the first peek to see if he's run not right out, but re-peeking it is just wild. You know he's lit too, and he is. He's at 1 HP. But you got to keep it comfy. 50 seconds left though, and oh... A flash that doesn't get a whole lot done there in office. Oh, Louie gets a ton of damage there on the... On the I think it was Argo. Oh no, Index able to get both Digi and Argo in office there. Argo trying to retrieve a nade. Hyper's trying to get the nade too now. But they're gonna double peek him and Nog gets the kill. A perfect round for the defense if you don't count the UAV. We're gonna call that a suicide. And it's a tie game at least. Great Gnomes round six to from two. Gnomes. You know, they play aggressive on that immediate office push. Punish rise and their fast play style and that's what you need you need to start you need to keep rise from getting momentum and what has gnomes done after the, going down 5-1 they've gone on a tear you know unfortunately that round w uh, was a fluke that one where uh you know it really was a fluke where they got onto vault but ever since that gnomes has readjusted and played better overall now they can end the game right here but they do have three more rounds after this to end it and they need this win here this win would be huge absolutely not only just for you know the st like statistically winning it faster but like the morale of getting beat 7-2 after a tie is just like man what did we do wrong and really after the 4-0 start from rise gnome go on to go 6-2 6-2 straight so it's 12 to 4 in the last 16 rounds for gnomes that's just that's a dominant performance that they've come out since they started slow we and you know it, you gotta think about it. gnomes had gone on this tear earlier what would the game have been at that point who knows, who knows? this game could already be over we could already be saying uh goodbye you know wrapping it up but instead that rise is able to force out this tie and they need to get their footing this is a really bad look yeah, it is. It, it rise need to be able to need to do something here to somehow pull out this tie, get the attack around, and then get those three straight defender rounds. Varana, Fang, Magnanimous. See that big word? I know how to say devs. I'm on top of it. I wonder if, be... if if Nos is just gonna go for it. You know, they want they want the win. Are they gonna be as aggressive as they have been before? Or are they just gonna keep playing? You know. Are they going to slow it down a little bit? Are they going to expect that Rise is going to play aggressive? Because they do have to go green now. This is another green push coming out from Rise mm -hmm. that can be easily punished. Oh, and look at the positioning from them. Index, Admiral, Nog, Louie, and Axie. All of them are poised to take anyone who drops out of this window. And the barbs are placed that if anyone wants to go anywhere, they're going to have to run through a barbed wire. And I believe they do. The attacker's Nog has a nade. That's a huge huge benefit there if you're gonna see people dropping storefront they're gonna be in a lot of trouble oh we could see a nade clip here i would love that Play a little 5k from this nade from nog he's got it pulled the pin is out on it he's just waiting for the drop waiting for the call see how many he can get hanging out here dogs Nog wants it he wants those kills he's peeking he's looking for it there's four of them around the storefront. They often people drop all exactly at the same time. The smoke comes out. Nog doesn't oh, Nate goes out. out. Ooh. Oh, lots of damage. No kills. Index gets the first onto Sam there. 
but a refrag from Explicit onto Admiral and Arcade bounces out. Argo, another one, two for Argo, as he's able to push all the way through Arcade. Nog hiding in the smoke here, Axe is able to get one back, but it's just Axie and Nog now. Oh, they, oh. Flash is going to get Nog back, but again, the smoke, they miss him. Nog able to get one onto Digi, it's a 1v1. Nog the auto shoddy, and Digi the black tar. Oh, he's got a molly he goes and finds. Oh, the molly lands. Takes damage onto Nog, but it's worth it. Buys himself eight seconds and maybe a chance to rotate. Digi's looking the other way. The bomb is on pretty well defused. Yeah. Oh, is he going to be able to punish? Oh, and he's not able oh. to do it. Digi lands a beautiful shot and is able to take down Nog. An impressive attack from Rise, but their back's against the wall. Keeping it six to three. And Nog, Nog gets the the nade right where he wants it but it's just a little bit too far it goes a yeah, little bit shorter it gets three members there uh yeah. luckily for gnomes let's be honest you know you don't have three people going down the nades not and nog did almost pull off that hero play being the only one alive in that smoke people ran right past him i, I swear that was the longest smoke of the century it just felt like nog was in that smoke for 10 years while people were just dying left and right all over the place but able to pull it out then Regardless, it's Rise on the attack. Or, I'm sorry, Rise on the defense. No one only need one attack round to pull this out and take the win. One. And they're going to get their first chance to do it on Sinister Spectre. You know, and Gnomes can't let them tie it up again. They have mm -hmm. to play aggressive on this attack. They have to finish this game out. Well, and remember, we saw in the first half, it was 6-3 for Rise. And no more able to pull it back and win three straight defenses. So, we are not in uncharted territories. A weird map, Sinister Spectre. Uh, all of these, this area here, has hit marker sounds, for those who don't know. And if you shoot through these wall bangs, for some reason, this wall just, it's not a wall. So if you shoot anybody through there, you'll get your hit marker sounds and you can really punish people from these positions. But, obviously you still can't see them. Overall, lots of cover for your storage pushes and things like that. It's a it's a solid map. Pretty pretty balanced, I think. Would you agree, uh, Marbles? Yeah, I think this map is a map that can go either way. We saw Gnomes like even barely able to scrape this one out on defense because of that, uh, you know... It really did work out that Index got locked in that truck, if you really think about it. He was mm -hmm. able to be let out, and instead of just, you know, them just clearing him out with the flash. So it's going to be interesting to see how Gnomes plays this, knowing what happened when they defended on this map. For sure. That's that's always the beauty of the, the second half of the match. A second half of a half, if you will, so a quarter. You, each team knows how the map plays already, how the other team played it. So, you know, as an attacker, you're like, hey, I know this strategy is good or bad. And as a defender, you're like, man, we can't put the mop here or something like that because, you know, it's just so easy to flash out. It's part of that learning, I think, that really uh, makes due process uh, really a fun game to play. It's going to be a five. Uh, I lied to you. Uh, going to be three men up in uh, storage there. Two going to go office here. Be interesting to see how long they wait to clack office. Uh, if they do it at the right time, they may be able to get a couple of these hits. Shots traded back and forth and swords. The charge comes out now. Immediately mollied and explicit kind of fall all the way back into toxic. Sam and explicit kind of backed into this corner here. No may be able to pinch them out. Shots are coming out from both teams onto each other. They're trying to get control of this green. Uh, push into office is actually really strong for them. I'll just be able to push up and easily handle explicit there. I'll get another one. Oh, he's just clean in the there. Oh. Sam Axie, another one on the hyper, and it's not looking good for Ryze's chances here. Digi gets one back, but Admiral, a beautiful refrag there with the Saber. And it's just Argo on dock by himself with the KR. Gets those shots out, not able to get a pick. It's Louie who finishes him off. 7 to 3, 4 gnomes. A beautiful, beautiful game from them. Just great performance overall. Great really nice performance stuff coming out. out from both teams. But, you know, Gnomes, like I said, was catching that momentum consistently. They were able to get the rounds they wanted to. Able to punish Rise for a lot of their plays. 
their defense was getting really good. Uh, but yeah, at the end of the day, Rise is uh, unfortunately just kind of playing sloppy. Uh, I wonder what the adjustment will be going into next match because Rise has to change something or they're looking to lose to Gnomes in a pretty deciding fashion. Absolutely. It's a it's a huge round here, a huge match coming up here. Rise have to force overtime in order to win this match. So don't go anywhere, guys. It's going to be a good one. Uh, see you guys in just a quick little break. A little break here, just to get the teams back into the game. See you guys in just a sec.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back for game three of Gnomes versus Rise. I am joined by Adaxi now. Adaxi, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Reviv. What about you? I'm doing great. I'm ready for game number three. I'm I'm excited. It's been a uh, since those first four rounds. It's been the Gnome Show. Do you think oh, Rise yeah. have it in him to take it back? Honestly, I mean, I'm I'm gonna be straight up with you here. This game is decided by who gets double attack. Both of these teams have shown in this in this series they have very strong attack rounds. We saw Rise choke a very hard lead on the first uh, on the first game, and we saw you know gnomes just win the game based off of attack the second game based off of when they got attack so i think this third game is really going to be decided by who can chip those defense rounds and who can be more consistent on attack and right now that is looking like gnomes for sure gnomes has been really just they're executing exceptionally well and i think rise tried a little bit during that last match to try you know be a little different you know, not just go with the whatever looks like the best play or the standard play. Yeah. But Gnomes reacted very, very well to it. And that's why I think it ended up being such a dominant game. You know, sometimes teams are just going to have better game twos. They're going to have better game threes. Some teams are more consistent. It's just a matter of can you reset the man mental going into this third game? You tie this, you go to overtime. Or actually, excuse me. No, Rise has to win this, go to overtime. But... Yeah. Um, gnomes, they only have to get six. They only have to get a tie score to win this one. So in yeah, terms of mental, it's all on rise. That's really it. For <laughs> sure. It's there's something about when when you need you can't let the other team get six. When you see him start to get three, four, five, mm -hmm. like it gets really, really intimidating in that second set, especially if it's a close match. You're like, man, we're not looking at winning, like you're planning not just we need to get a round, you're planning we can't let them get another round. Yeah, it starts to break down into can we keep going? And it starts turning into panic planning where you start like micromanaging and doing all these crazy little things because you're down one or two rounds. For sure. And you can't let that happen. You can't let that core breakdown happen or else you're going to get snowballed. Everything's just going to fall apart. And I'm really, really hoping, like I just mentioned, Rise has the capability to reset the mental. They did it. Earlier in the season, they showed that they can also show up to teams like Nemesis and Fierce. I mean, if they can't reset the mental now, something's happening. Something's going mm -hmm. on that they really need to step back and just look at. Yeah, for sure. I think they, and I think they will. I, I do anticipate Rise to go, all right, guys, we, we know how to win games of due process. We've done it a lot. Let's just mm -hmm. let's take a step back and play due process. <laughs> yeah. And I, I mean, think that's, that's, that's what we're lacking. That's really what it is. But Gnomes right now, they have the momentum. You have to hand that to them. If Gnomes wins this first round, then that might completely shatter Rise. You know, it's just a, it's just a matter mm -hmm. of can you get the ball rolling as Rise now that you've had this short break just to stop and think. But I, I don't really know what they'd be thinking about. Do you have any idea? Mm -hmm. I... I definitely think we, we started with a, at, you know, that first round, I think Marbles noticed it really well. We were seeing, <laughs> I just got invited to one of the team's lobbies. Um, mm -hmm. I think they were seeing a lot of, you know, gnomes read their Molly play, you know, and they figured out how to play around that really, really well. Mm -hmm. But now that, you know, that they didn't even come down to that. Rise was just, they were getting out planned in that last game. That's what it ended up coming down to. So I think, I think the talk isn't about what's specifically going wrong. I think they just need a solid, like firm reset. Go, guys, we're gamers. We got this. We we can we can handle this. And then go play the game. Mm -hmm. You know the way that they met. They've always been. Agreed. I think, I think a lot of the uh, the momentum coming from the side of gnomes is gonna be from you know Louis and Axie. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody knows Louis. Um, he's been around for a while and he is a very strong and consistent player, but in this for series, sure. we've shown Axie sh like really show up and start to step up for his team as well. So I think, uh, I think rise has to sort of have that same situation. There needs to be somebody to step up and just start shining, whether that be, you know, Argo, maybe digital. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have a fun fact for you guys. I have stats 
for oh, you have stats. the last Ooh. two games. Ooh, okay. Um, you have stats too. Any okay. predict? We'll, we'll, we'll uh. just look at game number two here. Yeah, look at uh, game, game two. Number two, as you perfectly said, Axie with thirteen and three. There you and go. And Louis at twelve and seven. They are picking up the package right now. They are pushing for the finish line. And conversely, you're seeing guys like Hyper one and nine. Sam yeah. four and nine. You know, guys who we're used to see kind of balling out a little bit, not quite um not quite landing what like you normally expect them to. Well, I mean, and, it's time to flip that switch. I mean, we might see Sam step up because he might have just had a bad game and he needs to realize, yep, I'm going to step up. I'm going to get pumped. I'm going for this. We're going to do good. And, you know, he might go in and, you know, be the top frag of this game. But also Argo as well. We've seen Argo pop off before. He might be the person to look out for in this final uh, final game of the series. For sure. We're looking I don't, here, though. Mm-hmm. I don't really think that there's going to be any super specific like pop-offs on Rise. I think they're going to band together and their teamwork's mm-hmm. just going to help push them over this line. Um, do you think anybody's going to shine, Reviv? Anybody specifically? Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see Argo jump back out and kind of take try to take the reins for his team. You know, we've seen it in the past. Um, so it wouldn't be surprising if that happens here. Yeah, but I would. We'll have to see. I wouldn't be surprised either, but we are starting out on a dome. This is going to be Operation Whole Hole, where we start with Rise on the attack, their strong side. If they can win this round, they can start the momentum and get it off right. And we're going to see a play that perfectly represents it. We're going to see a wall charge planned out here in Observation, where Rise is just going to immediately get lines of sight onto the bomb and they can safely drop down into the waters of jungle and just immediately stack onto the bomb, cover each other, clear those angles. Something that's really common on whole hole is going to be playing behind the rock on these water positions or even playing behind the bomb to cover the drop down. Those angles are going to be completely nullified with this wall charge. It's just a matter of what does gnomes do in, in reaction to this, really. Are they going to rotate through pit? Are they just going to try to take the 5v5 lockdown on site? Are we going to see a big fight? Or, you know, is it just going to start to crumble and be one pick after another? And I really think that's determined by the pace that Rise does this wall charge play. I am excited for this. They are on the right foot right now. Absolutely. It's going to be... Rise are, in, based on their planning, are in control of how this pace of play is. And it looks like... Gnome's playing super defensive here. They are going to go with this five-man stack back in OBS and Ruins. Yeah, three barbs, two mollies. They might be able to lock down that uh, that wall charge, and Nog might be able to get one, but it's really a matter of can they avoid these flashes and play together. It looks like Rise are concerned a lot about these base little rat spots, if you will. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how they end up playing it. The kick is out with the flash. All of Rise are really going to push in hard here, but they're going to be careful as they come over the top of this beach, not over aggressive here and get picked off. Argo, the first to drop here, going to peek this corner all by himself there. Luckily, no one from Gnome is going to be up there in OBS. Sam and uh, Argo are going to tag team and clear out all that base. No rats to be found. Digi now and the rest of the members going to push in. Nog waiting for his chance to get one pick, seeing if they can flash him out. Nog able to get one. They're going to oh, get the refrag. Sam gets the TK. Functionally, that's Nog's kill. He had shot Argo a second time, and it only took one more bullet to finish him off. Excellent, excellent job from Nog. They're able to get the kills. They nade out this barb, even though they're wall charging here. An interesting use of a grenade uh, there. Maybe, maybe Explicit's dropping on this while Sam covers. Oh, maybe they both drop while uh, Digital snipes. Maybe, I don't know. But it looks like they're getting the wall charge down now, trying to coordinate this. The wall charge is out now. All four members of Gnomes will be back on Ruins. Ooh, the mob shot rings out, does bomb. not connect. Good defensive mob there, but Sam's able to run around it. Index taken down. Sam, the only refrag. Digi picking one up. Oh, Explicit, you're in the mob. Oh, Explicit can't stuck in the water there. Digi's going to try to peek the Admiral here. Oh, Explicit Admiral actually getting the pick back onto Digi, but Explicit gets one onto Axie. who's using the runes to cover. A 2v1, Explicit on only one HP. Shot traded. Explicit trying to make something happen, but he can't do it. Louie gets the kill, and the storm marches on. It's going to be one nothing, Gnomes. 
Yeah, that's a situation you really don't want to be in. You should have only lost one to Nog there. And at that point, I think, or excuse me, Rise started to struggle. They were thinking, uh, we just really messed this up. What are we going to do from here? We don't have the people to rush site. We don't have the bodies to throw. And they did the plan anyways. And they, they just didn't have the bodies to get into site. We saw really good flashes. Four of gnomes were stacked up on that bomb. All of them were affected by that one flash. And if they had the extra body to push up, Axie could have been traded. The knack would have been nullified. The player behind bomb could have been reflashed, could have been pushed out, and it would have been a completely different round. But that team kill really just put a nail in the coffin there for Rise. And now it's Gnome with the first round in the series on defense. I mean, both of these teams are going to have strong attacks. It's just a matter of who can ship these defense rounds. And right now, it is, it is Gnome. Even though Rise is making mistakes, Gnome is still playing very well. And that is really helping them out. We're going to see several barbs come out on the eastern portion of the map. This is Exit Saga. This is going to be a kill house map with an airlock. Um, this is actually a map that people know a good bit about. You've got plenty of utility spots here. You know, you could go for a reactive, dynamic, whatever you want to call it, barb wire on office side. You can go for some sort of run out from lockers or club. You can even, there's a very specific angle from kitchen where you can throw a Molotov and it lands right on this barbed wire. Say, you know, if you want to have two people hold club, you can chuck a Molotov and keep that side of the map because club is going to be very, very difficult to keep control of. But if the defender team can keep it, I'd say they can win the round because these other two breaches, lockers, don't, doesn't really head anywhere. You're just going to get funneled through, you know, kitchen, you know, somebody head glitching on bombs, somebody playing auto shot close, you know, there's so many places to clear on that side. And then red door, why would you red door in the club when there's already a green door here? The, I mean, the only thing there is the secret of surprise if somebody's spotting airlock, but you can't really surprise them. You're blasting a loud door and you're sending nobody courtyard. I, it, It's just the red doors are not that good on this map. And club is really just, you know, that that battleground, that fighting area where whichever team comes out on top on that specific room, I think they can win the round. Absolutely. And you are seeing a uh, reactive barb there on Louie. You're going to either put it in that kitchen door or that office door indicated by those little parentheses as you guys can see. Yeah, and notice this. Louie's spotting them out. Mm -hmm. Louie's going to use this airlock window to see what he can see. Index taking these window shots, not connecting, but definitely making him scared. Oh, and Admiral gets a pick on the Hyper for free. Hyper not looking at his windows, and Admiral's able to punish him for it. Ooh, a great molly comes out from Nog there, stopping the push from Rise. More shots going back and forth, and Nog mm. able to get a pick there as well. Huge defense there from Nog. Another one, Axie able to take down Sam. Digi gets one back onto Louie, but it's a 2v4 for Rise. Oh man, what an opening engagement. Yeah, Argo's just stuck. It's all down to Digital to find someone here. Yeah, Digital needs a pick. He throws the flash, through, banks it through the window. That's not going to affect Nog at all, and he's the one able to get the pick onto Argo. Digi gets one onto Admiral, but Index is right there. 2-0 for Gnome. The momentum is all with Gnome right now. Yeah, it's, it's shifted. It's definitely shifted throughout the series. It's all on Gnomes now. I mean... I'm, I'm going to say it now. I think we all predicted Rise was going to just use their momentum and steam throw, almost maybe even steamroll Gnomes, but it's not happening. Gnomes has stopped the train and they are turning it mm -hmm. around. Two rounds on defense. That's huge. Not just because you're an attacker sided team, but you've also destroyed the attack that Rise has. It's going to be so much more difficult for them to get rounds now. And considering they're going to go to their weak side, multiply that by two or even three, it's going to be so much harder to get rounds. Absolutely. It's It just becomes, can you stop it? Can you just switch back and forth and back and forth? Rise right now, they need to pick it up. Gnomes only need six, and they're already a third of the way there. We're on Lotus Gauntlet, and I think this is going to give Rise a chance. You know, Rise has a bit more open air here. They're on attack. It's going to be a longer range map. So while we will see, you know, the mop come out from uh, from defense, the defensive gnomes, we can also see 
longer range weapons picked up by the attackers. I mean, the AP still shreds at long range. And it, it's something that, you know, it's just, it's strong. Why wouldn't you pick it up? You've got fire rate, you've got damage, you've got everything you need at long range. Almost like the less recoil on it as well, like then the black char, it's just, it's a go-to for the attackers right now. And I think if Rise can group up right and use their long range here properly, they can definitely take out the Saber that's, or the Mop that's most likely going to be on Admiral. Maybe Igmars that will be playing towards Office. And keep in mind, there's still utility on the attackers as well, so they could use that. Yeah, we are seeing that Mop going to be brought by Admiral. He's going to play on this Pipeworks. There's actually a really strong amount of cover right here. That you can yeah, use. that cover That's stands true. directly up, so you can crouch behind it, and you're completely safe. Yeah, super, super strong cover there. Uh, you have to be careful, though, for this office charge that they can push up, but that doesn't look like that's what... Uh... Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not sure what Ryze are going for here. They don't I mean, I think they're just going to try to get out. They might just try to get a sight line with Docs, and then they're going to rush in green, just use their force, use their long range, like I mentioned, just to try to get picks. I mean, Explicit's going to the dock. He has a door charge to create room. And then there's also a door charge on Hyper. Maybe they door charge the barbed wire, the extra barbed wire here. I'm not yeah. sure. We'll see how this uh, this dock charge goes as Axie's able to rotate away from it. Ooh. Not really going to even look. Total decoy clack there. All members of Rise are going to rotate off that dock Yeah, clack. Louis close on this door now. They should hear him. Louis played in this little rat spot with a KR and a molly. Big value there if he's able to get some picks. Oh, he's able to get the shots off. Oh, that charge flash. They were, oh, beautiful. Louis going to be taken down by Argos. They're going to push up here onto Office. A full rotate's going to come out now, though, as Louis going to call out that everybody's in there. No, so Nog and Axie going to hold this. It's Axie getting the first pick onto Explicit there. The smoke's going to come deep, but it's not going to help anything. Axie, another one. Nog's going to oh. swing it. He's got two. Looking for a third. Hyper's able to stop it. Axie going to finish it off, and he does. Oh man, Rise, don't get out of storage. Three defender pick? rounds. I mean, the initial pick was there. They just didn't follow up on their flashes at all. They threw two flashes into conveyors. The auto was full blind. There was a Groover player that was full blind and they just didn't follow up on it. What are they doing with their utility? They've shown that they can easily take out players on gnomes with gunfights, but their utility is actual garbage right now. I'm sorry, I have to be honest. They need to fix this utility if they're going to start picking up rounds, especially on defense. If you can't play off your utility in defense, there's no way in hell you are getting any rounds against a team as coordinated as gnomes right now. Worth noting that since the 4-0 start for Rise, Gnome are 16-3 and since then. Wow. That is That's... commanding. Gnome's has taken a lead that nobody thought they would. And we're back on whole hole. It's becoming a black hole for Rise. They're just being drained out by the now. noise of the Gnomes. And, I mean, you, we might see a similar play here. Gnomes could obviously go for that wall charge. But... Sometimes you want to save it for the other maps. Um, we saw a very interesting wall bang that might be used by uh, Rise here. Um, Gnomes, what they did is they barbed wired pit and uh, the pit to ruin store, and they set up Axie with a knack on pit. Um, this is something that we've seen in several games on this map, actually, across several teams, is starting to use pit wall bangs. These black walls are similar to factory, you know. It's a visual element where, you know, on top of factory, it's considered external. So you might not see it, but you can still wall bang through it with very thick uh, and I believe some sometimes thick weapons. So we might see a knack, we might see a Lagros, but it is possible to wall bang on dome. Hell, you could even go to pit and wall bang beach as they open it if you really wanted to, if you were that desperate. And I mean, it is a desperate situation for Rise. Their barbed wires are in a little bit more aggressive placements here. They might try to hold observation. Um, and that's going to be with Hyper and Argo on the auto shoddy. So are they picking up aggression on defense because they couldn't do it on attack? Or what are they doing here? Argo might run out. I mean, the possibilities here, you can't just predict Rise right now because they're not playing at their prime. They're having issues. And it's just, you can't predict what they're going to do. It's getting desperate. 
Looks like gnomes are gonna go for the oh Argo. That there it is. Run out. And it's useless. Super early. There's literally no way that they could have gotten there in that time. Index right? and Louis are rotating. That's a free red door yeah, on an eco route. Door they all rotate. They say we were <laughs> gonna go beach, but thanks Argo. You've opened the door. We're gonna come obs. Oh, Thank you, my friend. Rise. Argo's gonna peek again. He's gonna. Argo's gonna do it. He at least needs two. Oh, it's two. Well, Argo does a little bit of damage to Louis, but Louis's able to get off just in time. All of the rest of Rise on Ruins is like, uh, what you got going on here, buddy? Amali's gonna come out so they can rotate. No one does any rotation, really. Sam puts a barb in jungle right in the water. That's gonna make it so that most of the gnomes players are gonna want to push this lower ramp if that happens. Oh, here comes the splash. Argo. Trying to rat under underneath here into OBS. The OBS take is on now. They got all this info in the world here. Louie gonna hold this flank. Oh, they got a guy rings out just a little early though, and they're not he's not able to do a lot, just damage. And they're gonna see him on this rock through these OBS blocks. Index gets a smoke out that's gonna block the sight line from explicit. They're gonna get a Molly into the water. One of the worst things in the game right now. You just can't tell it's there. Hyper able to take Louie on the flank gonna push into base now you gotta be really careful gonna nade out that barb in jungle not do a ton of damage to argo though oh a beautiful shot from oh. gonna take out nog oh axie taken down oh argo two on axie index it's just admiral with the saber now he's able to take down argo as he drops into the water hyper's above Hyper. him though he might not know he's up there oh. doesn't matter digi's gonna handle him with the mop rise they know what they're doing it's three rise one. you finally did it at that point it's just a it's 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 fresh air. They gnomes, they should have won that round. They should have known Mop was playing in the back, but they were so hyper focused on that auto shotty that two players immediately got lit and the auto shotty just shredded straight through their armor. I mean, ah, that's that's a round you should win. You know, you have the time to just sort of assess what's going on. But then I, I'm guessing they're just like, oh, auto, auto's on the rock, auto's on the rock. And they just keep repeating that. And it's, it's you don't pay attention to anything else. They, they got so tunnel vision by the fact that they needed to make sure auto didn't get a kill there, that they let Mop get a kill, they let Lagros get a kill, and they let an entire firing line of defenders onto them. I mean, hopefully Gnomes recognizes that and they can fix that in this round on Exit Saga. But Rise finally picking up a round. It's starting to tilt over. Exit Saga. Keep in mind, this is another map where visuals are going to be key, just like we saw out of Observation. You've got Courtyard, which has the airlock looking into it, and you also have all of these club windows. There's so many utility spots to throw here. I mean, even if you just want to fake them out, you could throw a smoke in the middle of Courtyard and then have everybody run for the top side of the map and go for that breach. You know, maybe that catches out a few players in club because we saw a very aggressive setup from gnomes there. Or maybe that causes a really hard rotate and you can just use all your flashbangs on the bomb site to win the round. It's it's a matter of what information are you going to be feeding this enemy team and what information can you get back from hearing, you know, footsteps, from hearing barbed wire preps, from hearing molly preps, like all of... I think these maps that we've been seeing so far are very heavy on can you pace yourself correctly and can you use your information to find the enemy? And I mean, Digital and Sam, they're going to be holding this aggressive club hold that we saw from uh, that we saw from Gnomes. Sam is going to be a little bit more passive, though. The Digital still might be able to find a pick. Gnomes might be ready for this. They might not. I'm not sure. Explicit spawns in late with a knack. That might be... A key factor in the round. A knack on kill house. Uh, Not too sure though. D Digi kinda on an island there with two barbed wires preventing his rotation to safety. He might get caught out here. Oh, he hears him rotating yeah. off the club and is able to get information. out. Information. He heard the footsteps. It was the information there. And now it's just gnomes. They have to get the information. Yeah, Argo gonna close that uh, airlock. Might have been hyper actually that closed the airlock to uh, prevent them from being able to push in super easily as Louie and Index are going to go to this green secure club for them and it's going to be rough going here for Gnome. I'm yeah, they're sure still trying to clear club. I mean, yeah, what are they doing? What's taking so long to come into the building? 
Uh, they do finally push up into club, though. Index and Louis helping lead the way. All five members now just trying to centralize and kind of get their stuff together. Gonna open the airlock so they can get their way in. Sam doing a little bit of gat damage through the wall. Doesn't land anything, though. Trying to get a little bit of gat damage, I should say. Louis all the way up to the airlock. We know how we feel about the doors. Oh. Rise already taking advantage of them a lot. Oh? oh? The airlock. Um, just... They decided work? to open and close. Yeah, they they hit it, and then they had to hit the other button. That's a stall. Yeah, and the Molly comes out, taking three flashes. Oh, man. Three flashes used there from Ryze. There's only one happen. flash and left. Close the button. There's one left. All three members able to get in, though. Trades are coming everywhere. That's three. Four for Gnome. It's only... It's just Hyper left in the KR. He's doing work with it. He's got the bomb back. It's just Index and Louie now on the There's attack. Stall flash. The Molly comes oh, out and it gets the flash. The flash Beautiful really from Hyper. Beautiful. It's the bomb is facing smoke. the wrong way, though. He doesn't know where they are. The smoke comes out. It's going to do a deal. The smoke's going to figure gonna have to swing. Oh, and they're able to get him. Index able to get the final kill in a hectic round that all came all at once. For a second, I thought I thought Ryze's actually, actually held office because Hyper ended up getting two and there was a team kill on top of the... Uh, on top of, uh, what is it? On top of that. So, I, I, I'm I so confused. Like, we saw Gnome pushing through office. The flashes were really good there. But then there were just perfect Molotovs afterwards to cancel out every other flash. That smoke placement was so smart. Because if you don't know, when you come out of smoke, there's a half second where you have a depth of field effect where you regain your vision. That's going to give the advantage to the attacker watching the smoke instead of the defender running through it. That is huge. That is so smart from Gnomes. They didn't have any other utility, and they were like, all right, split-second decision. I know how this is going to favor us. I'm going to place it here to help us. You stick the bomb, I'll cover you. And it worked perfectly. I mean, props to Rise for putting on a very strong hold and using their utility correctly, but that round was more they didn't win their gunfights. Mm-hmm. I think Office really should have been held there, but I can understand yeah. if they were flashed out. Well, and Kitchen, too, they only had one flash to push in there because the Molly negated three of them. So it was yeah. really just surprising to see that loss. Hyper got all the... Ended up winning it all, but uh, the loss of many fellow gnomes. Mm -hmm. We're back on Lotus Gauntlet. Gnome yep. only need two more to secure the win. Gnome need two, and I mean, once you get to five, you can't make any more mistakes if you're Rise. I mean... Rise, it's come down to, all right, guys, we're we're going to start picking up rounds. And now it's Rise, we have to pick up rounds. We can't drop any more. Mm -hmm. So that change in mindset might, you know, push them over the edge to fail or even succeed. It's, it's really a double-edged sword here as gnomes, they're looking for some sort of power play, it seems like. They have a nade prepared for the server's barbed wire that's sort of default on this map. As well as um, they're aware of what could be a forklift player. If you see, there's a southern cubby of the map where players like to hide and just camp out, you know, with different guns to hold on to dock. You can even get on top of this forklift in that cubby from docks and hold an angle onto the green door. Maybe we'll see Digital do that with a mop. Maybe we'll see Digital open up the dock, you know, Rise was sh showing that they can get aggressive on defense. And I mean, factory is the place to do it. You don't want to give attackers room because it's so, so massive. And just like that, double sniper on the defense is going to make it very difficult on such a wide open factory for uh, the attack to come out. Gnome would like to highlight the, the phrase pogfish. I'm sure Fish will <laughs> have that written down. A, a server push, one I've not seen in a due process game. The server I mean, it's happened a few times. I mean, sometimes the servers are just better. Sometimes you just want to go for random things to throw the enemy off. Yeah, yeah. Like, look at these sightlines. Now only Argo can cover this. They only have to yeah. deal with Argo and Sam. They're going to flash server out there. They're able to do so. Sam taking his Ingmar shots, but they're able to get power. They might rotate all the way out, honestly. They, this wall charge is drawn up. It is down. Argo missed the initial shot. Ooh, the shots aren't landing. They're able to molly off the side, but the charge is out. Index getting the first pick with the oh, attacker. Oh, they're separated. There. 
Oh, Digi has to fall back into the dock here with the mop. They might not know he's up there. He might play big impact late round here. They're going to flash out these docks. Now going to run all the way across. Sam be able to see him in the back. Not able to secure the kill, though. An Axie agent. jumps on the bomb. Digi going to push up here, see what he can do with the mop. Shots trading everywhere. Louis got two up in office. And two players left alive on the defuse. What? No, what? Moms have match point. They have series point. What? what? Okay. What? I got to break that down. Hold on. What so are you going to break down? <laughs> Argo holds servers, right? And then the Molly goes out, separates the two parts of the attacking team on that wall charge. So instead of pushing as a team, they decide to throw their grenade at Argo, who dies... And then they just stick a bomb and cover both sides of office so Rise can't go anywhere. That's... I, I don't even think that was planned. That was just a mess. I, I mean, that I was all chaos. How on earth did, like, half of Gnomes manage to get all the way across and up onto Doc without a uh, flash? While all those people up in office... Just let them run across and go push... And, like, the mob just stood there. The, the mob like, just stood the, in the yeah, dock. Like, the didn't utility was really good there for Rise again, but they just didn't. They didn't shoot. They just were dumb just bounded. Just didn't shoot they, anybody. I, <laughs> Regardless, no needs just one C store attack to take it here. And it's rushing Vox. It's a fresh map, meaning you're not going to be predicting what either team is doing right now. I mean, we've seen some shotgun plays towards this red door swing out. We've seen some double freezer players in this map we've also seen wall charges with auto shoddy counters i mean you're not going to be able to predict anything on this map it Gnome is no fresh charges. half no listen you're right first half first half i can count to three really yeah yeah, yeah. I can <laughs> but uh no, just ignore me completely because sorry no did that to us in our game where they they went they intentionally played with no charges at the end so i thought they might have done it again i mean maybe we'll see we'll see but Something you can do on this map is door charging Teledor. You always know that this barb is going to be here because Teller is a central rotation point of the map for the defenders. You can't just rotate through storefront without like running behind a bunch of attackers. What are you going to do? Be sneaky? Whatever. You shoot them. Um, but this barb right here is such a central point of the map. And some teams just prefer to door charge it because sometimes that'll even net you a kill and that'll net you the surprise factor, the speed that you need to get into storage because, you know, Pulling that pin on the grenade makes a sound. Landing on the ground makes a sound. Blowing up makes a sound. And that takes so much longer than just running in right after the door charge. But it looks like Gnomes is playing it safe. They don't want to just try to win it off here. They are bringing a nade, and they have plenty of flashes. Nog on the uh, DL here can be able to open up that colors. And Admiral, again, big fan of the Black Star here. He's bringing it here. Louis, the first to drop. They're going to flash deep into Arcade, but they're going to be able to molly their barb and able to fall out. Good molly. Yeah, explicit. Very blind when he was throwing that molly. Impressive to land it where he did. Now going to push up here and open up Teller. All of Rise here kind of located in this top chunk of the map here. I don't even want to say the third. It's really Explicit the has to be careful. Like, he's going to swing the barb and Louie's going to punish him for it. He's not able to get really much done at all. A little bit of damage onto Axie. Now all of Gnome here is pushed into Teller. Ready to push into bomb site. And they still have their nade. Able to... Ooh. Rice, Rice forgot still the barb. Nog still has the nade. Another molly comes out. Again, they're not going through the door. The nade is and deep. The it's going to get one, but they're able to rotate out. Hyper taken down by Axie. But Sam and Argo now, the last chance for Rise here, trying to hold down the storage. Oh. Argo's going to swing it. He's able to get one. Nog immediately puts him back down. Though Sam's doing oh. a little bit of work, but Nog finishes it off. And that's it. That's game. 6-1. We go from 6-6 six, six to 7-2 to 6-1. To what is performance from Gnome? Nobody expected that, and I really think, I'm going to say it now, the Louis pickup won them this game. Louis being on gnomes and fragging out and having that top frag, like you mentioned, the stats won them this game. Louis got so many entry picks, and it, his team were his team was just able to support him afterwards. And I mean, Rise they used their utility well in that second half, but then they just started forgetting things and they started losing their gunfights. It went from winning gunfights, forgetting utility, to 
you know, losing gunfights bringing utility back to winning gunfights missing utility. Like it's it was such a mess and I feel like Rise even tying the first game, they didn't come prepared. Gnomes came prepared. Rise did not. And that's just that's an upset nobody was expecting. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda thought that that that's what was gonna happen. But that's just me. Anyway, we have the end of the season. This is the end of the regular season, folks. It is. Um, we so have we playoffs have final soon. Standings. The final standings of the season are as follows. Nemesis finishing at a cool 7-0 and in first place. Very Rise nice. actually end up in third because Yakuza is going to finish at the, because of a head-to-head tiebreaker because Yakuza beat uh, Rise when... Oh, no, no, I'm lied. Yeah. Because... Rise beat Yakuza because that was a five on four, right? Yes, they did. So Yakuza, so Rise is still Rise second. Rise in second at five and two. Yakuza is Yakuza third. Yakuza third at five and two. Not that it matters. They're going to play each other to start the season anyway. Yeah. Fierce finishes in fourth at what, four and three? Yes. Gnome's going to finish in fifth. This game keeps them out of relegation. They stay Huge in for next for season, guaranteed. So that's going to put them at three and three. Goy finishing in sixth on the head-to-head tiebreaker against Rats at two and five. Just kidding. Completely ignore me. Rats at one and five and LCG finishing at one and six and Rats finishing at, uh, sorry, and in eighth, (laughs) I'm butchering this, LCG at zero and seven. So those are your top four teams. Nemesis, Rise, Yakuza, and Fierce. They're going to playoffs and Gnomes is guaranteed a slot next season. Correct. And Goy, Rats, and LCG are going to have to play the winners of the Rivals Relegation Tournament to see who can stay in DPL. Yeah, it's it's a struggle now for those three teams. They need to step up. And I mean, we've seen Rats step up. Maybe, maybe they'll do something. I think they'll stay in next season. LCG has also been looking very strong. Maybe we'll see them step up against, you know, some of these top Rivals teams. I mean, some of them are scary. I mean, Neo specifically, everybody's talked about them. They're, they're you know, mini nemesis, quote unquote. They're super aggressive. They know what they're doing. They play off their information. They have such good wall bangs. Then you have Frisky Fraggers, extremely well coordinated. And then some of the other top six rivals teams, you know, Pogfish. Um, what else do you have? You have Katura, who's mostly EU. There's so many new faces that can come into DPL. And right now it is going to be a power struggle towards the lower side of this uh the standings for sure i do have stats on that last game if you're curious i'd love to hear them review uh, nog top fragging at eight and three followed closely by louis at seven and three and axi at six and four i mean it was a short game you're yeah. not going to get more than 10 kills in a game like that on the flip side digi the only member of rise getting over four kills wow at five and six hyper and argo both at four sam at two explicit at one all of them dying six times so really just kind of a pure domination. But that's what you expect when you get a a 6-1 like that. That's just going to... Yeah, Rise couldn't have. reset. Rise couldn't reset. And I think that's going to be something they talk about going into playoffs. Mm-hmm. I mean, unfortunately, even though Gnomes has now beaten a top two team, they're still not going to playoffs, which is really heartbreaking. Yeah. But they've shown that they can definitely push for it next season. I'm curious to see what Rise does to recover for playoffs, and I'm curious to see some of the roster uh, changes that have been happening with Nemesis and Yakuza for playoffs. Playoffs are going to be exciting, folks. Oh yeah, they are. A it's it's going to be a brawl. We got we got a week off here for to let Rivals fin- start working its way to the end, and if there were potentially any tiebreakers, which there are not, there aren't. Yeah, um, and then we have. Ty- and then we have playoffs right after that. Yeah, it's first versus fourth and second versus versus third. I believe it's double elimination. So we'll see Nemesis and Fierce. And then we'll see Rise and Yakuza as the first two matchups. Absolutely. It should be great. We hope to see you all there. And I mean, hey, there's still going to be rival streams in the mean- meantime. So if you want to see some of those up and comers, I mean, stay tuned for that. I mean, especially those teams that we've been mentioning over and over again on stream. Just saying. They're pretty good. Maybe you can learn something from them. <laughs> For sure. Get Keep sure that notification bell is on so you don't miss any due process league content. As for this stream, I've been Reviv. I've been a Daxi. 
Marbles was here for a while. Yeah, Marbles was here, but I replaced him. And that I'm just going to cut it there. That's it, Reven. We'll see <laughs> Thanks everybody. Thanks, everybody, later. for tuning in. See you guys real soon.